get those for completeness. And the one thing I noted was that there was a date and time for the appearance that was not included. Um, and so I just wanted to address that on the record. Uh, since, of course, this is a multi-day, multi-week trial, um, typically individuals, whether it be the state or a defendant, would put the first day of trial on the subpoena unless there was some other information uh, to suggest a different date. Um, obviously, we've already started, um, but I can ask the state if they, um, given kind of how things have been proceeding thus far, I know originally you had thought it would take five to seven days for you to present your case in chief. Are we still like on target for that from when we started the taking of testimony? Yes, from when we started the taking of testimony, yes. Right now we are projected to uh, wrap up our case Thursday afternoon or Friday morning. So that would be within that five to seven day range, Your Honor. All right. Um, certainly would be reasonable if you picked a date either Thursday or Friday if they show up which presumably they would, right, if we're able to get all of these, not me, but if the state's able to assist, given what they've said earlier and getting the subpoenas out, um, then um, even if we weren't quite to that point, I can certainly bring people in and let them know when to come back, and that's pretty typical. So, Your Honor, so just so I'm clear, so I put, uh, so that would be roughly the 13th or 14th? Today's the 10th, so Thursday would be the 13th, and Friday would be the 14th. And then uh, I didn't look very close to the names and whether you had addresses, but you should put in their last known address or other information as to where these people can be served, if you know. Uh, that's, I was going to mention that, too. That's kind of problematic because a lot of them... Their addresses are not stated in the paperwork. So I don't. I are don't all of these individuals referenced in the paperwork that you've reviewed? Yes, they are. All right. Um, presumably, then, Attorney Opper, you'd be able to look at that and perhaps assist with that information? Yes, to the best of my knowledge, everyone's address is somewhere in the paperwork. But yes, I, I'm sure we will be able to find um, addresses. The other omission I noted, and not necessarily your fault, is these were stamped by our clerk of court, which is standard. Um, I will direct my clerk with your approval to put today's date uh, for, the, uh, for the date that these are all signed by the clerk of court's office, okay? Is that a yes? I thought I saw you shake your head yes. I just yeah, want to I, confirm for the record. Okay. I mean, it's, it's just a lot of this on, you know, that I expressed last week that I wasn't really sure how to get done so whatever assistance is greatly appreciated all right so madam clerk is directed to uh, put in the date uh, at the top left and then what i'll do is i'll keep um, a copy for the court's records and then i give you a copy and then we'll give the um, originals to the state so they can look over them and then tell us if there's any issue with trying to get them served but i need to get that to them this morning with your approval so they can let us know if there are any issues. Do you um, agree to that, sir? Yeah, I just got to put the dates in then, correct? Yes, yes. It would be fine if you did Friday morning. I mean, even if the state got done a little bit early on Thursday afternoon or something and we, in theory, had time to call a witness, I'm happy to just go to the next morning so that it's clear. What should I put for the time? 8.30. And then just let me know when you're done so I can address a couple of other issues.
do have the um, preliminary jury instructions. I can look at it for a minute. Yeah. of those. If you tell me the number, I can also look that other thing up. Madam Clerk is copying um, those subpoenas so that the court has a copy, Mr. Brooks has a copy, and then the originals go to the state to review and uh, assist with service. I do want to address uh, Exhibit 6, which was previously received by the court. Uh, this is the uh, six-minute squad cam and audio footage from Officer Phillips. Um, as I advised last week, um, after I went back into chambers to review that, um, I did uh, note what Mr. Brooks had said. Um, I may have been a little bit off on the language in terms of what Ms. Patterson has heard saying, but it's a pretty clear reference to uh, one of the incidents that is the subject of uh, a prohibition by this court related to other acts. And I indicated I would, I was inclined to strike that uh, exhibit and so advise the jury, but I would give the parties an opportunity if they had any arguments on that to address that this morning. So since the state offered it and there is that violation, I'll turn to the state. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, uh, first, I do offer my apologies to the court and to Mr. Brooks because the uh, previous occasions where we had watched that video, we did not catch that. I think the record will speak for itself, but uh, there was a lot going on in that video. As you had mentioned previously, the officer's radio was talking. You can hear the dispatcher, you can hear other officers, and you can uh, hear some people talking in the distance as well. So uh, we did mistakenly include that. However, that being said, Your Honor, um, I think it's a clear reference to the other acts only if you know there's other acts. Truthfully, I think it's a vague and ambiguous statement. Uh, what I heard the uh, statement to have been at about the 252 mark in the recording, I heard Ms. Patterson say, me and my baby daddy, we fight all the time. We had an incident, he ran me over with a car. That's what I heard her to say. She does not say it happened in Milwaukee. She does not say it happened three weeks ago. She does not say I suffered a broken leg. To me, in the context of Ms. Uh, Kunkel's testimony, excuse me, Runkel's testimony last week, in which she testified that Mr. Brooks had swerved at her, swerved at Erica Patterson, and that Ms. Runkel had pulled her out of the way I don't think the jury would have immediately thought Erica Patterson when she made that statement, if they heard it, uh, was referring to something weeks earlier in another county at, a, at another location. Um, really the only thing objectionable about that whole uh, quote I just issued would be the very last phrase, he ran me over with a car, and again, 
if she's referring to the Milwaukee incident, it's, it's not clear from that statement. I certainly understand um, with the knowledge of the Milwaukee incident, there's a reasonable interpretation. That's what she was talking about. But she may also have been talking about the events of November 21st, even to, uh, to um, an objective standard on this record, Your Honor. I don't think the jury would have um, realized or appreciated she was talking about another incident. So I think the, uh, the exhibit can stand as is. We could redact just uh, you know about a two or three second um, audio from that recording where those words are removed. And I listened to it several times over the weekend. I think if we did that, it would not be that obvious so that the uh, exhibit could stand in place. Um, the, uh, the officer, if you recall, the timing is he's getting out of his car and he's approaching them and she's making these, she makes that statement about he ran me over with a car, but then her very next sentence is, there's nothing happened, nothing's going on, nothing to be worried about here. And she's essentially trying to convince the officer not to do anything. So again, I think that also uh, supports our contention that um, if we strike the exhibit or we strike words from the exhibit, we may be calling undue attention to something that was very vanilla to this jury that they really uh, wouldn't have thought twice about given the testimony of Corey Runkle and Erica Patterson that was already on the record. So we would offer to um, redact that portion if appropriate, but it may also be appropriate just to leave it stand as is. And should they ever ask to see that exhibit again, um, we would prevent that from being played a second time. Thank you. Mr. Brooks, do you have a position on this? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's obvious to me. Um, I don't really have, I can only hear out of one ear and I was able to hear clearly what was said. Um, with all due respect, Your Honor, you made a ruling about this previously in ample enough time before the trial even started, you made the ruling. I see no reason why the exhibit should be admitted into evidence. Uh, from my perspective, it's clearly obvious what was being referenced. I mean, if she was able to give any type of statement at that time to the officer, then obviously she wasn't hit at that time on, a, on, on that date on the 21st, she would clearly be referencing some other incident. Hence the reason why we argue all the time in this, that, and the third. Uh, it, it was clear to me what was being referenced and because of the ruling, because of uh, the implication in that statement, I believe the exhibit should be striked altogether. Thank you for your position, Mr. Brooks. And the reason why last week I said I'm inclined to strike it, but I wanted to give the parties an opportunity to review it over the weekend is in some respects because of what the state just said. There's information on that clip, at least from Ms. Patterson, that I didn't know if you wanted to come in or not about nothing happened here, right? Those types of statements. So that's why I give the parties a chance to look it over and then come back to court um, and tell me what they want to do. So your position has been made clear. You believe it should be uh, struck um, or stricken, as we say. And I agree with you, Mr. Brooks. This court gave a very clear uh, prior ruling related to other acts and the state had an obligation to abide by that ruling. Um, while I have options available to me, meaning I could redact it um, if the jury wants to hear it later on, my concern with redaction is it may possibly highlight that portion. We don't know whether any one of these jurors heard it and made a note about it. And that's certainly not something I'm going to ask them to reveal. Um, and because of the violation, and even though there's other things going on, even though I could redact, um, I am going to strike this exhibit and so advise the jury. Uh, as far as advising the jury, I simply want to tell them the following when they uh, come into court today. As previously, the court received exhibit six, 
during the testimony of Officer Phillips. Uh, the jury is hereby advised that the court has stricken this exhibit um, and the jury is to disregard uh, anything it may have heard regarding what was on that exhibit. Any objection to that language from the state? No. How about from you, Mr. Brooks? No. All right, then I know at, last week I also had indicated I had asked the Sheriff's Department to prepare um, an incident report regarding uh, one of the occasions Mr. Brooks was removed from the courtroom. Um, I've been advised it's been uh, dictated and I believe written. I haven't seen it yet, but I did follow up on that this morning. I believe I'll have it at some point today and we'll turn that over to the parties. To the sixth Thursday, October the sixth. That was in reference to the incident where, if I if my memory is correct, where uh, there was. Uh, not about the COVID test, but about the um, needing you to sit down so that, uh, I don't remember if you were over there or here or what, but uh, they needed to get those restraints either on or off so that you could be situated and um, uh, that's where you had indicated you had been hurt. So that's what I'm talking about. I wanted to have a record of that here. I think that was the six. I also want to uh, state for the record that I, um, was giving uh, paperwork to fill out a report of my own. Uh, and I stress that because um, after the detectives came and took the pictures of my bruises and injuries, I was told that they didn't know when I would actually get the actual filing of the report that, that they were gonna report. So I just went ahead and asked for my own. I filled that out. I don't know if it, it's been given to the right parties yet you're talking about the uh inmate complaint form to have the uh either the jail or the sheriff's department review that related to the use of force yeah it was um it was the the top paper was from uh the sheriff um, all right you know that that's not my responsibility to address what happened other than how it impacts this trial which is why i wanted to have a record if there's anything you believe should be in the record from you regarding that then you should uh turn that in okay, okay. all right i didn't have anything else on my list of things i don't know if the state does or mr brooks so i will uh, ask the state first if there's anything you believe i should address prior to the jury coming back out uh, yes, Your Honor, I would ask um, that some of the witnesses that testified last week be released from their uh, subpoenas, especially now that we have Mr. Brooks' witness list. Um, specifically, I'd be referring to Corey Runkle, uh, Officer Phillips, Kyle Edwards, Hi Holly Berg. Um, I note on his list today he does still have Erica Patterson and Detective Guth. Um, at some point. We'd like to be heard about that, but we don't need to delay the jury at this point. All right, any position on their request, Mr. Brooks? Um, I guess my uh, objection to that would be uh, Officer uh, Phillips. That would be one that I would still like to be under subpoena. Everybody else is, I'm, I'm fine with. That's the officer 
whose squad video I just struck. So you didn't have them in your subpoenas. So you'll need to, for now I'll tell the state they can't release them, you'll need to fill out a subpoena and I need to have that um, by the lunch hour today okay. in order for him not to be released from the state subpoena. And I definitely um, don't want Erica Patterson released from. Right, you have her on your subpoena, okay. so I understand that. I just wanted that for the record. All right, thank you. All right, then I will grant the request from the state as to Corey Runkle, uh, Kyle Edwards, and Holly Berg. Uh, for now, Officer Phillips will remain under the state subpoena along with Erica Patterson and Detective Guth. We can take um, issues up with that either, you know, maybe closer to the lunch hour or when we come back or even at the end of the day. But I would like to bring the jury out. But of course, Mr. Brooks, I need to turn to you first and see if there's any issues you believe the court should address. Uh, very briefly. Um, I just want to state this for the record that um, I would like to issue the, the court an apology for me um, in regards to my actions last week during the trial. Um, I just want the court to understand it's, it's, it's very emotional uh, right now, not, not only for just the whole situation of the trial, uh, the families here that have to go through, you know, everything that's going to be involved with the trial, but also my family as well and myself is it, is very very emotional, and but not to excuse my actions, I should uh, carry myself uh, with with uh, better respect than that. I wasn't raised that way, and um, I owe you, Your Honor, and the court an apology, and, and I'm going to stand up as a man and and, and tell. The whole court and you, Your Honor, that I apologize to the bailiffs that I apologize for my actions. Um, like I said, that's not how I was raised. I come from a Christian background. My mother did not raise me that way. She did not raise me, you know, to act out uh, out of frustration and irritation and, and, and anger. And I just wanted everybody to know that I apologize for my actions. And um, I'm going to try my best to um, whatever happens to conduct myself um, with respect and with respect to the court. And I just wanted y'all to know that the prosecution, judge, bailiffs, uh, clerks, reporters, everybody, the audience, everybody here, I just wanted y'all to know that. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. I do appreciate that. Um, Understandably so, this is an emotional experience, I think, for everyone involved. Um, and I appreciate that you, upon reflection, have realized that courtesy and decorum are an important part of a court proceeding. Um, I know that despite you being emotional at times um, and not being an attorney, you certainly um, you're clearly paying attention. You've made some very salient points uh, throughout uh, the last few days. Um, I think you're settling in quite well, and you know we're going to keep this trial going. Um, and you know, I, I know you said earlier, and I just want to make a record of this because it's really important that I do this, sir. You've mentioned repeatedly about your hearing. I know you don't have the headphones on now. We'll give them to you. Um, just based on what I've observed this morning um, and how you've responded to things that have been said, I think you're hearing us. But we'll, if we haven't made the headphones available, we got to make sure we do that every single day so that if you need them. Um, but um, I do appreciate everything that you've said. And I know we have Detective Casey who will bring up momentarily for your cross examination, just so everyone is aware. It's my practice when there's a second day to also put the witness under oath again. So he'll at least be sitting up there when the jury comes in, um, and then I'll have Teresa um, put him under oath again. Go ahead. I, I don't want you to get mad with me, but I have to say it on the record. Will you be addressing my um, filings about the subject matter jurisdiction of the court? Um, I have addressed them previously. Um, perhaps not to your satisfaction. I understand your objections. They're noted, um, and my previous rulings stand. 
Will you be proving? Sir, my previous rulings stand. That's how I'm going to address that, okay? All right, with that, we'll have the jury brought out. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. You can sit for a minute. I'll wait till our jurors have their notes ready. And good morning and welcome back. Hope you all had a very nice weekend. Previously, the court received Exhibit 6 during the testimony of Officer Phillips. The jury is hereby advised that the court has struck this exhibit. 
The jury is hereby advised to disregard anything it may have heard uh, during the playing of Exhibit 6. With that, we have uh, Detective Casey here for cross, as is my practice when there's a second day someone's on the witness stand. I am going to have him stand to be sworn in again by my clerk. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God? Yes. Thank you. Please be seated. And once again, for the record, state your first and last name. Thomas Casey. Thank you. Mr. Brooks, this is your opportunity to question him. Good morning, Detective. Good morning. Um, so, how long have you been in uh, law enforcement? Uh, 25 years. That's a long time. Um, I want to direct you to uh, the evening of November 21st, 2021. Um, you stated that you were on duty that afternoon, correct? Yes, sir. Um, do you recall any uh, disturbances that afternoon? Do you mean when you drove through the parade routes and Your question was a little broad. Why don't you try to narrow down the time frame so he can answer that more specifically? Uh, roughly around the time of maybe 4.30ish p.m. Yes, I do. Um, do you remember what you can recall? Do I remember if I can recall? Do you remember the disturbance you recall? Yes, I do. Uh, would you state what that is? What, well, what that was, rather? Uh, I heard a horn beeping, and then a Ford Escape came through the um, parade route, and you drove past me and wouldn't stop, and you continued driving into the parade route. Who is you? Uh, Daryl Brooks, the defendant, seated at the table. Um, let the record reflect that I do not identify by that name, nor do I know anybody by that name. Your objection is noted. So, you heard a horn beeping? Yes. Was it coming from the vehicle that you tried to stop? I believe that it was. Um, you stated that you've been in law enforcement for 25 years. That's a long time. Um, so it would be fair to say that you uh, operate a motor vehicle uh, pretty much every day. Would that be fair to say? Yes, I operate a motor vehicle almost every day. And um, would it be also fair to say that you would only beep your horn in a motor vehicle if you were trying to alert someone to your presence? Uh, I think that could be a fair statement. Would it be also fair that you would beep your horn to avoid any danger? There could be many reasons why a person is beeping their horn. Would one of those reasons be to avoid danger? Could be, yes. Do you recall if you um, were able to see who was operating the vehicle you attempted to stop? Yes, I was. And can you recall a description of the opera operator of the vehicle you attempted to stop? Uh, he was light skin, uh, black male, he had some light facial hair. Is that all you recall? That is what I recall. Um, do you recall what they were wearing? No, I do not. 
So you were able to get a description of how the operator of the vehicle looked, but not what they were wearing. That is correct. Do you recall how fast the vehicle was going at the time you attempted to stop it? I believe the vehicle was going about three to five miles an hour when I tried to stop the vehicle and it continued on past me. Would it be fair to say that uh, three to five miles an hour is not very fast? I think it's very fast when you're in a parade route when there's hundreds of people marching in the road and a police officer is in standing in front of your car pounding on the hood trying to get the vehicle to stop. I'd say that that's too fast. Any speed is too fast on a parade route when you have all those people in the roadway. A car should not have been there. Um, that wasn't the question, but thanks for the commentary. <laughs> Detective Casey, please just answer his questions. Attorney Acker will have an opportunity to redirect if necessary. Would it be fair to say that that's not a very fast speed? Objection. Asked and answered. Sustained. Do you recall if the operator of the vehicle that you gave a description of had any uh, hair on their head? Um, I do not recall seeing the operator's hair that day. So it would be fair to say you don't know if they had long hair, short hair, anything of that nature? That is correct. Do you recall uh, testifying in, at the preliminary hearing in this matter? Yes, I do. Can you recall what you said when asked the, a description of the driver of the vehicle you attempted to stop? I don't recall word for word what I said. Do you recall being asked the question? I would think that I was, but I don't recall the exact words that I used then. Just one second. <laughs> Do you recall saying that the operator of the vehicle you attempted to stop had short hair and a short dark beard? I'm not sure what the context is, but I don't recall seeing that the person had short hair. The, the context was uh, the question of, did you get a description of the driver of the vehicle you attempted to stop? I guess I'm not sure when you're speaking of, because was that when I saw the car or when we saw the vehicle after what witnesses said? It seems like it's I'm not sure exactly the time period that so you're are asking. you talking about what witnesses said or what you actually saw? Correct. That's what I'm confused about. Well, you just said that you recall being asked at the preliminary hearing that you testified at a description of the operator of the motor vehicle. Would that be fair to say? I don't understand your question. Uh, I think it's very clear. You testified at the preliminary hearing in this matter, correct? Yes, I did. And were you not asked a description of the operator of the mo motor vehicle that you attempted to stop? So I believe my testimony was at the preliminary hearing that I did not see the person's hair if that's the specific time that you're speaking of. I have a portion of that preliminary hearing that you testified at with your words right here. Mr. Brooks, what page are you at? I am at page 17. All right, thank you. And you were asked, could you see anybody inside the vehicle? Your answer was, um, at that point, um, 
I could not see the person real clearly, but as the vehicle continued pushing through me, I was paused. My position changed to the side of the vehicle where I was directly outside the driver's side window and I could see inside of the window and I could see the driver very clearly. Would that be fair to say that those are your statements? Yes, sir. So, could you or could you not see the driver clearly? Your question is if I could see him clearly, yes, I could see him clearly. So why would you state that you couldn't see him clearly when asked the question? I think you're asking about his hair. I'm so no, I asked going about his hair before. Between... This is a different question. Could, I asked you ask, about that. could you ask your question again, please? You just stated that you could see the driver clearly, correct? Correct. But you also said that you couldn't see the driver clearly, correct? Objection, that's a mistake. Grounds. Yeah. So, Mr. Brooks, I think it comes down to a little bit of context. I'm going to sustain the objection, and then if you would please rephrase. I think it comes down to at what point in time in the contact with the SUV are you referring? At any time. Your Honor, we need the question again. That's not, that question is vague. Right. Put it all together. If you would, I'll sustain the objection. At at any time, could you see the driver clearly? At any time during your attempt to, attempt to stop the vehicle? Yes, at any time I could see the person clearly that was driving. The entire time you attempted to stop it, you can clearly see the driver of the vehicle? Well, at one time you asked any time, and then you asked the entire time. So I Detective Casey, just answer the question, please, if you can. If not, say you don't understand it. I don't understand it. Just a second. Did you observe the vehicle strike anyone when you attempted to stop it? No, I did not. Did you see the vehicle strike anybody before it approached you? Uh, no, I did not. Would it be fair to say that there were hundreds of people present at the time that you attempted to stop the vehicle? Yes, there were hundreds of people there. And you saw no one struck by the vehicle? That is correct. Did you see if anyone else was, could, could you see rather, if anyone else was in the vehicle? I did not see anybody else in the vehicle when it passed my location. Do you recall there being any tinted windows to the vehicle you attempted to stop? Uh, I do not recall the passenger front or the passenger rear being tinted. It's, I believe that the rear windows on the SUV were tinted. So it would be fair to say that from your vantage point, you wouldn't be able to see the entire seating of the vehicle you attempted to stop? Statement. Grounds. Um, overruled. You may answer the question. Could you re ask the question, please? Would it be fair to say that because of the tint to the rear windows, that you cannot visibly see the seating of the vehicle that you attempted to stop? Uh, I did not see anybody in the vehicle. Um, I don't think that the tent had any um, reasons for me not to be able to see in. So it would be fair to say that you could clearly see 
the seating of the vehicle you attempted to stop, front passenger and back seat? From the limited view that I had, I thought that I could see it. Even though you just said that the, back, the rears were tinted? I believe that it's the far back windows in the passenger compartment that were tinted, not the passenger windows, from my memory. So it would be fair to say you, you can recall every window that was tinted on the vehicle that you attempted to stop? I think the question's been asked and answered, Your Honor. His answer Grounds. should stand. Hold on, Mr. Brooks. Um, the objection is sustained. Next question. Uh, Detective Casey, are you a party to this case in any way? I don't understand the question. Are you a party to this case? I don't understand the question. Have you filed a claim in regards to this case? I have not. Have you read the complaint in this case? I've read the complaint. Do you recall who the complaint was brought by? The complaint is brought by the state of Wisconsin, represented by the Waukesha County District Attorney's Office, District Attorney Sue Opper. So the state of Wisconsin then will would be the plaintiff in this matter then, correct? That is correct, the state of Wisconsin. Do you see the state of Wisconsin present in the courtroom right now? Yes, I do. They are represented at the prosecution table by District Attorney Sue Opper, Deputy District Attorney Leslie Basie, and Assistant District Attorney Zach Wichell. You said represented. Yes, sir. Do you see the plaintiff? The plaintiff is an entity. They are represented by the district attorney's office. So the plaintiff is an entity? Correct. To the best of your knowledge, is the entity a human being? An entity is an entity. It is not a human being. To the best of your knowledge, being in law enforcement for as long as you have, would it be fair to say that an entity, which is not a human being, living person, can bring a claim against anyone? I believe they object, uh, Your Honor, to the grounds, relevance. Grounds. Hold on, let her get her objection out, okay? I mean, I've tried to be patient, but these questions really have no bearing on this. The objection is sustained on relevance grounds. Next question. Have you ever had any interaction with the plaintiff in this matter? Objection, irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. How long have you known the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Let her get her objection out, Mr. Brooks. It's sustained on relevance grounds. Well, I do respect, Your Honor. I, I think that those are valid questions to the matter. Mr. Brooks, they've been sustained. Next question. Just so we're clear for the record. did hear the vehicle that you attempt to stop blow numerous times. Blow its horn. Yes, I heard the horn blowing as it was approaching my position. Would it be fair to say that that would indicate that the vehicle was trying to alert people to its presence? Objection calls for speculation. Grounds. Sustained. Speculation. So would it be fair to say that 
the beeping of the horn was coming from, from the vehicle that you attempted to stop? Objection asked and answered. Grounds. It has been asked and answered one last time. He may answer, though. Go ahead. The objection's overruled. I believe that it was coming from the vehicle that was coming to my position, the Ford Escape. I want to refer you again to page 15. Um, it is from your testimony at the preliminary hearing. Well, Your Honor, that's improper because Detective Casey does not have the testimony transcript in front of him. The district Grounds. attorney is correct. This, this witness does not have the transcript in front of him. So he, would that render him unable to recall what he testified to? I don't know. You have to ask him that. <laughs> That's what I was attempting to do, Your Honor. I apologize. So just so I'm clear, am I allowed to read from this or no? Just ask your question, Mr. Brooks. From the best of your knowledge, do you recall stating in your testimony at the preliminary hearing that it was in fact the vehicle you attempted to stop that was blaring its horn? Objection. That's not what Grounds. the transcript says. Grounds. And it's been asked and answered. <clears throat> um, sustained. Were you injured in any way attempting to stop the vehicle? I was not injured when the vehicle, when I was trying to stop the vehicle. What did you do after attempting to stop the vehicle? I, I first got on my radio and advised the other units that were in the parade route that uh, Red Ford Escape had one past my position. I requested additional squads be sent 1039, which means red lights and siren. Uh, shortly after that, I began ran running after the Ford Escape in an attempt to stop it, but the vehicle um, sped up to a speed that I couldn't keep up with it until the, it hit the next position. Reading from the transcript, uh, page 18. Do you recall, do you recall us making a statement? Initially, I began, it's sort of what you just said. Initially, I began chasing after the vehicle to try to get it to stop. And as I was following behind the vehicle, I could see that it was on the north side of the roadway at times beeping its horn. Would that be fair to say that you made that statement? That is a fair statement. So even after you attempted to stop the vehicle, you still observed the vehicle beeping, beeping its horn? I heard the vehicle beeping its horn after it passed me. No further questions, Your Honor. Can you redirect? Uh, yes, just briefly. I'd like uh, permission to put up Exhibit 120 again, Your Honor. It's already been admitted and published. Permission granted. Detective Casey, is Exhibit 120 on the screen now? Yes, it is. And uh, you've been asked here today several questions from Mr. Brooks about uh, what you saw as the vehicle passed you, is that correct? Objection. I do not consent to being called that name, and I do not know the person that you refer to. Objection is noted. It's overruled. Yes. Is Exhibit 120... Well, strike that. Do you know where on the parade route the vehicle was located when this screenshot was captured? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. Yes, I do. Where? Uh, approximately the 200 block of West Main Street. The building directly 
opposite the Forest Gate is 234 West Main Street. You were back at the intersection of White Rock and Main Street, correct? Yes, I was. So about how far was it from where you saw the red SUV with Mr. Brooks driving to where this photo was, where this video was taken and this is a screenshot from that video, correct? Objection. I do not consent to being called that name and I do not know the individual by who you refer to. Your objection is noted. May I answer the question? I would say that it's approximately two tenths of a mile for me, a very short distance. Okay. Was the appearance virtually the same from when you saw it to when this screenshot was captured? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. Yes, it was. Are you able to see the driver of the vehicle in this screenshot, sir? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. Yes, I am. Can you see the hair of the driver in this screenshot, sir? You cannot see his hair. As the, dri as the vehicle went past you, back at your post on White Rock and Main, what were you focused on? I was focused on the driver's face when it was driving past me. Okay. You s told us on uh, direct examination on Friday you were able to pound on the hood, correct? Correct. Were you directly in front of the vehicle at that point? Objection. Um, it was also, he also said in uh, his testimony on Friday that he could identify the clothing. He specifically said what the color Mr. of the Rocher clothing was. Mr. to testify. That's not a proper objection. As to the specific objection, um, it's overruled, and uh, Attorney Opper may complete her question. Where were you positioned when you were pounding on the hood of the SUV? Objection. Overruled. And by that, I don't mean the street, I mean where <laughs> on the car. I was directly in front of the vehicle by the left front bumper. Did you have to step out of the way to avoid being struck? Objection. Here's it. Overruled. Uh, the vehicle came in contact with me. As it was pushing through me, I shuffled my feet to the side and then I continued down the side of the vehicle where I came directly in view with the driver's side window. Okay, so you would have been, what was the driver doing as it passed you? Objection, irrelevant. As he passed you, I should say. Overruled. Objection, I do not Mr. consent Brooks, to being called he. Uh, initially he was staring straight ahead and as I was pounding on the driver's side window, he turned and looked directly at my face. Okay. And that, the reason you were pounding on the hood and pounding on the driver's side window is what? I was trying to get the vehicle to stop. Did the, did the vehicle stop? The vehicle never stopped. Did the driver uh, make any effort to pull over or pull off the parade route at that spot? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. Uh, I initially chased after the vehicle, trying to get it to stop. Um, I could see the vehicle driving until it crossed Barstow where it first made contact with people. The vehicle sped up and I never saw it slow down or stop until I lost view of it as it crossed Barstow Street. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. You may step down. Statement call its next witness. Thank you. The state would call Officer Bryce Buttrin. Officer, please make your way to the witness stand, which is to my right, up a riser. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand. My clerk, Teresa, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each. First is Bryce, B-R-Y-C-E. Last is Butrin, B-U-T-R-Y-N. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Sir, how are you currently employed? 
as a police officer with the City of Waukesha Police Department. How long have you been a police officer? Uh, approximately five years. Were you on duty on the date of November 21, 2021, sir? Yes, I was. And what was your duty? I was assigned to a traffic control post for the annual holiday parade. And uh, what time did you start that afternoon? I believe it was approximately 3 p.m. Okay. And you were given a specific assignment of an area to patrol along the parade route? Yes, I was. What, where was that location? I was initially assigned to East Avenue at Arcadian Avenue, and I had repositioned to East Avenue and East Main Street. Okay, I'm going to uh, actually ask uh, if we could please put up Exhibit 1. Go ahead. So I'm going to give you a pointer, sir, if I may. Yeah, um, if I could have uh, Deputy Wittick come get that from you, please. Thank you. It's on the big screen behind you. I'm going to have to ask you to use the pointer and just um, point out these locations, please. So, Is that expandable? Does he need yes. to open that up? All right, thank you. Okay, so you told us first you were monitoring traffic at East Street and Arcadian Avenue, is that correct? Yeah, so I was at East Stand Arcadian, which would be right here. Okay. What was your purpose in working that location originally? Originally, it was to prevent any northbound traffic from entering the parade route onto Main Street, so to divert any traffic from East Avenue to travel eastbound on Arcadian. Okay. And then you said you moved up? Correct. Where did you go at that point? I had repositioned my squad, which was a marked police SUV, um, to the intersection of Northeast Avenue and East Main Street. When did you make that move? <laughs> Uh, from what was the parade lineup that we had when there was approximately 10 spots left that we had thought, which was inaccurate at that time. Okay. Um, so as the parade was starting or? As the parade was nearing the end. Nearing the end. Okay. Okay. You can have a seat again, please, sir. Um, when you got up to the near the parade route, uh, did you just stay in that area, sir? Or yes, I did. Were there any other officers present in that area? Yes, there was. And uh, were you just watching the parade and monitoring the people? Correct. At some point, did something unusual occur? Yes. What was that? There was initial radio traffic of squads being dispatched to. What was initially coded as a man with a knife call. Um, there was information that there was a fight occurring in Frame Park. And then after that, there was radio traffic that there was a vehicle that was entering the parade route. Okay. And you were um, near the beginning of the parade route, as you just showed us, right? Yes. Okay. When you heard that information about a car entering the parade route, what did you do? Based on the information that was available at that time and previous situations that had occurred, um, I unholstered my firearm and stood and began walking out into the road on East Main Street. What were you doing? Trying to get the attention of the driver to divert them off the parade route. Okay. And uh, how far into the road did you go? I was initially positioned right at the intersection on the south side of Main Street. I had made my way to the north side of Main Street and I would estimate maybe 50 feet or so from the intersection of Northeast Avenue. Okay. Were you able to um, visually see the red SUV at that point? Yes, I was. What was it doing when you first saw it? The vehicle was traveling on the north side of Main Street. It was honking its horn and I estimated the speed to be traveling at approximately 25 miles per hour. What did you do? I had raised my left hand and was telling the vehicle to stop and the vehicle was ignoring what I was doing. When you say raise your left hand, can you demonstrate that for us, please? So I placed my left hand out in front of me, um, indicating to the vehicle to stop. Okay. Were you dressed in a full police uniform, sir? Yes, I was. Just for the record, when he raised his 
left hand, I would say about chest high, it was with a palm facing out as if in a stop position. Thank you. Um, Officer Butrin, as you stood in that uh, position with your hand straight out trying to stop the car, would you say the car was off to one of your sides or directly in front of you? Could you tell us the position of the SUV? The vehicle was directly in front of me. I would estimate my position to be where the front license plate would be on a vehicle, so right in the middle. And what distance was the SUV away from you when you did this? I would estimate the vehicle was approximately 200 feet or so. Um, it had came extremely close to me as it was making its way towards me. Did you maintain that same position that you just described for us? Yes, I did until the vehicle was getting to the point where I believed that it was going to strike me, so I moved out of the way. Were you saying anything? I was saying stop um, to indicate to the driver that stop the vehicle. Were you um, saying that in normal conversational tone or did you raise your voice at all? I was yelling to get the attention of the driver as it was loud outside and it was cold, so I believed the windows were going to be up on the vehicle. Okay. And um, your testimony is that you stayed in the position with your left hand extended in a stop motion for about as long as you could until you felt you had to move away to avoid being struck by the SUV? That is correct. If the, if, uh, the SUV was coming directly towards you, did you step to the right or the left of the SUV? I would have stepped to the right of the SUV, which would be the driver's side of the vehicle. Okay. Were you able to see the driver of the vehicle as it went past you? I was able to get a general description of the driver. What do you remember? I remember the driver to be a male black wearing a gray or white shirt and appeared to be wearing a hat or have their hood up. Okay. Would you say you got a good look at the driver's face? I would say yes, I got a relatively good look at the driver's face. Okay. Did you observe any facial hair on the driver? At that time, I did not. And uh, did the car go right past you, sir? Yes, it did. As it went right past you, did anything obstruct your vision uh, to see into the car? No, it did not. Were you able to see into the car, the SUV? Yes, I was. Did you see any other persons in the SUV? I did not. There was only one sole occupant, which would be the driver of the vehicle. As you um, were yelling at the SUV to stop and holding out the stop sign, did the vehicle stop? The vehicle did not stop. Did you see what the driver was doing as he went past you? The driver appeared to be emotionless and was looking straight ahead, clearly ignoring anything that was to the sides of the vehicle. Okay. Did you hear the vehicle honking its horn? Yes, I did. More than once? Yes, multiple times. As the uh, vehicle went past you, what did you do? I had lowered my firearm again to my side and I attempted to grab the driver's side door with my left hand. Why did you do that? In order to hopefully open the door and gain the attention of the driver to get them to stop. Would are you able to estimate the speed of the vehicle as it went past you? Objection. Hearsay. Um, overruled. He may answer. Based on my training experience, I estimated the vehicle be traveling at approximately 25 miles an hour at that time. Were you able to get the door handle open? I was not. Did you get, get a hand on it? I did not. The vehicle was traveling too fast to be able to do that. Okay. You reached for it but missed, basically. That's correct. Okay. This is uh, the area where you tried to stop the SUV. This, this is before Barstow, correct? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, did you continue to watch the vehicles that went past you? Objection. Really? Overruled. I had watched the vehicle and I began to chase after it westbound on Main Street. On foot? Yes, on foot. Were you walking or running? What were you doing? I was running after it. Were you saying anything at that time? Objection. Irrelevant. Overruled. 
At that point, at the vehicle, after the vehicle had passed me, I was not saying anything. I just began chasing it. Okay. And you were running after it? Yes. Were you able to catch it? I was not. The vehicle was traveling too fast. Can you approximate the speed of the vehicle at this location? After the vehicle had passed me, I appeared to have begin, or begun increasing its speed. Uh, the vehicle was traveling approximately 30 to 35 miles an hour. Did you see the red SUV strike anyone? Not between the intersections of Northeast Avenue and Northwest Barstow Street. How about once it crossed Barstow? Yes. What did you see? Um, you can uh, take your time. I'm sorry. I know this is a lot of questions. So. Um, I observed the vehicle swerving side to side. Um, people flying from the vehicle, items flying in the air, um, things like that. Do you know, Officer Buttrin, as you uh, have to reflect on this in your testimony, who was being struck? Do you remember a uniform or a description of any type? There was so many things flying at that point, I don't know what was being struck. Now, you were trying to keep up with the vehicle, right, on foot? Yes, I was. Um, to be clear, there's no squad cars chasing the defendant's vehicle, correct? Not at that time, no. Okay, just officers on foot trying to catch up. That's correct. And uh, at any point did you see the vehicle just pull over to the side of the road and stop? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. From the time that I could visually observe the vehicle, I did not see it stop or pull to the side of the road. After you saw the SUV strike other human beings, did you see the driver stop, pull over, and check on those persons? Objection. Irrelevant. Overruled. No, I did not. The vehicle continued. Was the uh, driver of the SUV still honking the horn? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. From the distance that the vehicle had traveled away from me, I could not at that time hear what the vehicle was doing. Okay. I'm going to um, show a couple videos to you, okay, sir? Um, first, I'm going to ask uh, for exhibit number 16 to be put on preview mode. Go ahead. All right. Do you see Exhibit 16 on your screen, Officer Buttron? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. It's on now. Okay. I'm going to ask Miss Gussie to just play a few seconds so that you can make sure you're looking at the same clip that we've seen before. Okay, you can stop. For the record, uh, about three seconds of the clip was played. Do you recognize this video clip, sir? Yes, I do. In the preview that you just observed, did you see yourself in the clip? Yes, I did. Okay. And uh, I'm going to ask, uh, ex excuse me, do you believe this clip is a true and accurate representation of your actions on November 21 of 2021? Yes, I do. Move to admit and permission to publish, Your Honor. Objection. Um, we haven't seen the entire video yet. How do we know what's in the video? The proper foundation has been laid. The objections noted. Uh, exhibit 16 is received. Permission to publish is granted. All right, for the record, it's a total clip of 18 seconds. I'm going to play it through once for the jury, and then we can break it down and ask you to describe uh, further if we need to. Officer Buttron, is that uh, the uh, video, is that video consistent with the testimony you just provided about your efforts to approach the SUV and stop it? Yes, it is. 
we were not able to see on the video the part where you uh, stood in the middle of the road with your left hand extended, correct? That is correct. It's, but uh, we did see you run from the right side of the video to the left side of the video and appear to be making your way down the north side of the street, is that correct? That is correct. And is that the location where you would have been when you tried to stop the vehicle? Yes. And then we saw you sprinting after the vehicle, correct, on foot? Yes. Okay. I'd like to show you another uh, exhibit, 17, please. And again, we'll preview it, ask you to take a few seconds to look at it and see if you recognize it, okay? Okay, you can stop. Again, she just previewed the first three seconds. Um, Officer Buttron, have you seen this video before, sir? Yes, I have. Do you see yourself in this video? Yes, I do. Uh, do you believe this video is a true and accurate representation of your actions on November 21 of 2021? Yes, I do. Do you happen to know uh, how this video was recorded? Objection. Well, from relevant. what camera? You're right, it's a vague question. From what camera this video was recorded? Objection. Relevant. Overruled. This was recorded from the City Watch the Police Department uh, squad camera. For your squad car? For the squad car that was operating that night, yes. Okay. Uh, move to admit number 17 and permission to publish. Objection. Um, actually, it's four seconds that was played, and I still don't, we still aren't clear of the relevancy of this video. Your objections are noted. The foundation has been laid. It's relevant. Overruled. Exhibit 17 is received. Permission to publish is granted. All right, we're going to put it up before we play it. I'm just going to have you set the scene here. Can you, that's a touch screen in front of you, sir. Can you circle yourself in the uh, video? All right, and next to you, it looks like there's a person in uh, a yellow vest that reads police. Is that correct? Objection. Uh, we're referring to the officer giving testimony, not the officer that's present with him. Overruled. Yes, that is correct. Who is that officer? That'll be Officer Schneider. Okay. And uh, what's the crossroad here again, if you could just remind us? Objection. The, we'll start on the south side of the street. The objections noted, it's overruled. He may answer. On the south side of the street where the squad is parked, that it's going to be Northeast Avenue. Okay. And on the uh, north side of the street? I believe that'll be Buckley Street. Okay. So, um, can you erase, you can clear the screen, please? Oh, clerk did it, thank you. Um, just kind of draw a line or, or point out where Buckley Street is. It's a little hard to see exactly at this moment, correct? Correct. You could just show the, air, the, okay. And as this video plays, you can see Buckley Street a little clearer as the people move, is that right? That is correct. Okay. All right, please clear, thank you. All right, we're going to go ahead and play this in its duration. It's 37 seconds in length. There you go. Correct. All right, Officer Buttron, again, um, it's not a 100% clear shot, but you can see you making your way around the front of that white, S, uh, white pickup truck, correct? Correct. That was one of the entries in the parade? I believe so, yes. Okay. And um, then you kind of go out of view behind that white pickup truck, correct? That is correct. Is that the area where you encountered uh, Mr. Brooks in the SUV? Objection. I do not identify by that name, nor do I consent to it. Your objection is noted. It's overruled. That is where I had initially placed my hand out in front of me and advising the vehicle to stop. Okay. <coughs> How far down 
down that parade route did you run, sir? I made it all the way down to the, there's a tattoo parlor, I believe the address is in the 400 block of West Main Street, so almost all the way down Main Street until it makes the curve and ends. Okay. And you were not able to ch uh, catch up to the SUV, correct? No. But again, as you've uh, previously testified, the SUV had not stopped anywhere along that route, correct? Jackson already asked this question, and it was answered already. It's foundational, Your Honor. Overruled. Correct. I never observed the vehicle stop at any point that I was making my way down the route. As you were running down the route, did you encounter people who had been struck and injured? Objection. Already asked question. Overruled. Yes, I did. What do you remember about that, sir? There were multiple casualties on both sides of the road, um, varying degrees of injuries to people. Um, the only way to describe it is just pure chaos. There was people pulling at me in multiple directions trying to help people. Um, Did you attempt to render first aid to some people? Initially from the area of Barstow to the area of about Clinton Street, um, there was still an active threat of the vehicle, so I continued to chase after that vehicle to stop the threat. Um, and then when I made my way to Clinton Street and Westbound from there, um, began to render aid. Okay. Some point uh, much later in the night, are you aware that the uh, vehicle that was suspected to have been involved in this incident was found on Maple Street, sir? Yes. Did you go to that area? Yes, I did. Did you take a look around the area where the vehicle was located? Yes, I did. Were you able to um, determine, well, strike that. You, do you remember where the vehicle was parked? Objection, irrelevant. Overruled. I do not recall the address in which it was parked, but I do know the position of where the vehicle was parked, yes. Could you just briefly describe how the vehicle was parked? Objection, irrelevant. Overruled. The vehicle was backed into a driveway at a residence on Maple Street. Okay. And do you um, remember looking around the area where the vehicle had traveled um, near the residence on Maple Street? Yes. Do you remember uh, finding a hat at that location? Objection irrelevant. Overruled. Yes, I do. I'm going to ask for. Uh, Exhibit 92 to be previewed for the witness, please. Is 92 up, sir? Yes, it is. Do you remember seeing uh, that item? Yes, I do. Do you believe this picture is a true and accurate representation of the hat that you observed in the backyard? Yes, I do. Uh, move to admit 92 on permission to publish, Your Honor. Objection hearsay. How, how can we know for sure that that hat wasn't by somebody that lives in the building? Mr. Brooks, you can't testify. You're attempting to do that. I'll instruct you not to. Um, your objection is overruled. And Exhibit 19 is received. Permission to publish is granted. I'm sorry, it's 92, Your Honor. Oh, 92. Thank you. Exhibit 92. You remember seeing that hat in the backyard area, sir? Yes, I do. Okay. In fact, do you remember asking the people at the residence if any of them owned that hat? There was one male that came out that had taken a picture and asked the rest of the residents at that location if it was <laughs> any of theirs. And did it belong to anyone at the residence? They indicated that it did not. Officer Buttrin, um, the videos that we saw, Exhibit 16 and 17, I asked you uh, about that 
um, side road um, on the north side of the street, north side of Main Street, Buckley Street, correct? That is correct. Were there any barricades at that location, sir? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. Yes, there were, if I remember correctly, I believe there were three barricades. And did they um, fully block the roadway at that location? Yes. <laughs> if uh, Mr. Brooks had wanted to leave the parade route, would he have been able to get out at that location? Objection. I do not consent to that, that name, or nor do I know any <laughs> individual by that name. Your objection's noted. He may answer the question. Yes, it would have been a reasonable exit point. Would, would there have been anything other than those plastic barricades that would have blocked his exit from the parade at that spot? Objection, hearsay. It's not hearsay, it's overruled. He may answer. No, the only thing that would have been struck was the plastic barricade. Okay. Thank you. Those are all my questions, sir. You may ask this witness questions, Mr. Brooks. Yes. Um, officer, is it butchering? Correct. Um, good morning, officer. Um, you stated um, that you had got uh, or you heard a radio call about a, a knife fight in Frame Park. That is correct. Um, did you ever at any time follow up or go to Frame Park to investigate the said knife fight? No, I did not. Uh, did you learn any initial information about the said fight? No, I did not. Do you know who reported the knife fight? No, I do not. So you also stated that uh, that you heard the vehicle that was approaching honking his horn multiple times. Is that correct? Yes. To the best of your knowledge, what would be a reason that someone operating a motor vehicle would honk their horn? Objection, speculation. Overruled, you may answer. There are multiple reasons why a vehicle would do that. Can you give any specific reason? To alert people or vehicles in the area that there's a vehicle coming. And you also stated that you didn't see anyone um, struck when the while the vehicle was approaching you? Between the area that I observed the vehicle and Northwest Barstow Street, I did not see anybody struck, no. Would it, would it be fair to say that you also didn't see the vehicle target anyone? Objection. Speculation. Rounds. Calls for speculation on the part of the witness. So it's sustained. Question. Did the you way see? It was asked calls for speculation. While the vehicle was approaching you, you you stated that you saw it maybe two hundred feet away. I think is was you said. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Did you see the vehicle actively targeting <laughs> anyone to strike it to strike them? Same objection. Sustained us to the form of the question. What would you what would you estimate uh, the population was right at what was shown on the video? Was it hundreds of people, dozens of people, right in the general area that you were? I would estimate there's probably several hundred people in that area. And you saw no one struck. Objection, babe. Can you rephrase, please, just to be specific? Out of the hundreds of people that were in your general area, 
you didn't witness anyone being struck by the vehicle? Not initially. You also stated that there were barricades in the general area that you were? Yes. Um, were they off to the side? Were they in front of you? Where, where, were, where were the barricades located? They would have been located on Buckley Street and on Northeast Avenue. Would it be fair to say that those were the, the side streets coming into the main street? Yes. So would it be fair to say that a vehicle that was on the parade route would have to go down one of those side streets that was barricaded off to exit the parade route? Yes. And from your, I guess from your uh, perspective with a vehicle that was on a parade route, no that they can exit from those areas that were barricaded? Objection, speculation, sustained. Were you injured in any way by the vehicle? No. The video, the video was pretty, it was a pretty short video. Um, would it be fair to say that the vehicle passed you relatively quickly? Yes. And you were able to get a look at the operator of the vehicle as quickly as it passed you? Yes. Did you notice any tinting to any of the uh, windows on the vehicle? No. So you were able to see inside of the vehicle pretty clearly? Yes. Did you get a description, description of what the operator of the vehicle was wearing? Yes. You stated that the operator of the vehicle was wearing a hat. Would that be fair to say? The operator of the vehicle appeared to be wearing a hat or have their hood up. If you got a clear description of the operator of the vehicle, wouldn't you know if it was a hat or a hood? Objection, argumentative. Grounds. Sustain, rephrase your question. Would it have been, would the video, would the vehicle had been moving too fast for you to clearly see if the, the driver had anything on their head? No. About how fast would you estimate that the vehicle was traveling when it passed you? Approximately 25 miles per hour. About how fast would you estimate the vehicle was traveling when it was approaching you? Approximately 25 miles per hour. Were you able to hear the vehicle honking before it approached you or when it came upon you? I was able to hear the vehicle honking before it approached me. Did you hear the vehicle honk after it had passed you or came in contact with you? No, I did not. Would it be fair to say that the video shows that you can clearly see, see or 
let me rephrase that. Would it be fair to say that the video that was shown, you can clearly hear the vehicle honking? No. Can we play the video again for the witness? You want it? Which one? Which video? Um, the, uh, uh, exhibit 17. The squad video? That's the one you're requesting, the squad video? Uh, yeah, uh, exhibit 17. All right, permission to publish exhibit. and show is granted. Pause it right here. So at the time, we see you uh, running over to where this uh, white, I think that's a pickup truck. Is, is that you? Yes. At that time, had you uh, heard the vehicle honking? I don't recall. What prompted you to uh, move so quickly to uh, jog towards the area that you were jogging to? The radio traffic that I had heard. So at that time, did you see a vehicle approaching? Wait, wait, I, I still want to play that. At that time, did you see a vehicle approaching? From my position here, I don't know exactly when I had observed the vehicle. Continue playing. Pause right there. Would it be fair to say that that was not just a horn that was heard honking after the vehicle was past you? I did not hear a horn, no. Well, wind it back. For the record, Your Honor, the first time Mr. Brooks asked for the video to be paused, it was 22 seconds. The second time, it was about 39 seconds. We're now going back to about the 30 second mark. Objection. There isn't 39 seconds in the video. It stops at 37, so how could it be 39? I'm sorry. You're absolutely right, sir. 29. I thought you said 39. I can hear I can hear a horn. Sir, you can't testify. So you can ask a question of this witness. We'll watch it again. When but at let some me point you can't argue with it. Let him. me ask this question. When did you observe or hear the vehicle honking? At which part in this video? At no point in this video do I hear the horn honking. But you did, in fact, hear the vehicle honking. Yes. Do you remember what, what you were generally doing when you heard the vehicle honking? Making my way to the north side of Main Street to get the vehicle to stop. So that would be when you were sprinting over to the white pickup truck. Correct. That's when you heard the vehicle honking? Sometime in between there, yes. And you heard it multiple times? Yes. And to the best of your knowledge, 
honking horn from a vehicle would indicate trying to alert people to his presence, correct? There are several reasons why a vehicle would honk the horn. Would you honk your vehicle to alert people to your presence? Jackson, irrelevant. Grounds. It's not relevant, sustain. You said it would be multiple reasons that a vehicle will honk its horn. Would it be fair to say that one of those reasons would be to alert? Objection asked and answered. Overall, he may answer it. You may finish your question, but. <clears throat> would it be fair to ask that that would be to alert the many people that we can see in this video right now to the presence of the vehicle approaching? Yes. Um, Officer Butcher, and I see you in the uniform today. Would you? Would it be fair to ask that you would be on duty right now, if not called to testify? Hold on, uh, Mr. Brooks. Before we move on to a next topic, you had asked it to be paused. I trust you don't want anything further from this video published to the jury at this time. Not out at this time. All right, Madam Clerk, may take it down. My apologies for the interruption. Um, oh, it's okay. Go ahead, ask your question again. Um, would it be fair to say that if you weren't um, here to testify this morning, you would be on duty? No, I would not be. So this would be an off day? I am currently on vacation, yes. Do you normally wear your uniform on vacation? Grounds. He may answer. Only if I have something related to police activity or duty. Do you feel that, do you feel that it was necessary to wear your uniform in court today? Objection. Grounds. Sustained. Next question. Are you a party to this matter in any way? Grounds. Irrelevant. Grounds. S sustained. It's not relevant. Do you have a claim in this matter? Objection. Irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. Have you read the complaint in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Not relevant. Sustained. Do you know who the plaintiff is in this matter? Objection. Irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. Can you testify on who called you to testify? Who subpoenaed you to testify here this morning? I believe it was the state of Wisconsin. So the state of Wisconsin would be the plaintiff in this matter, to your knowledge? Objection, Your Grounds. Honor. This question is irrelevant. Sustain. It's not relevant, sir. Sustain. Next I question. I think relevant. Who called him to testify? He already answered. So. You've had interactions with the state of Wisconsin? Objection. Grounds. Relevant and vague. Grounds. Sustained. Can you testify if the state of Wisconsin is a living human being or an entity? Objection. Grounds. Relevant. Sustained. So you, in fact, don't have a claim in this matter, correct? Objection, irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. You are aware that all police departments are funded by the state of Wisconsin, are you not? Objection, irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. Grounds. Sustained. If that's an inaccurate statement, then who pays you? Objection to Grounds. relevance. Overruled, he may, ask, he may answer. I assume you mean who pays him his salary. Correct. You may answer. Be the city of Waukesha. Is the city of Waukesha in the state of Wisconsin? Yes. Is the city of Waukesha the plaintiff in this case? No. <clears throat> Have
Have you ever, how long have you known the plaintiff in this case? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. Next question. So to the best of your knowledge, you've never even had any interaction with the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Sustained. Mr. Brooks, under 906.11, if you, can, you need to move on to a new topic of cross-exam. Otherwise, I will declare the cross-exam opportunity closed. At any time when the vehicle passed you, did you hear the vehicle honk? Objection. Asked and answered. Sustained. Is it fair to say that in the video clip that we were just shown, no one was struck? Correct. Would it also be fair to say that in the video we just saw, no one, the vehicle did not attempt to strike anyone? Objection. Speculation. Grounds. Grounds. Sustained. Calls for speculation on the part of the vehicle operator. We can clearly see in the video that no one was attempted to be struck. How is that not relevant? Um, the jury will disregard the last statement made by Mr. Brooks as he may not testify at this point in time. Next question, please. And just for the record, I don't consent to being caught that name, Your Honor. Next question, please. Is it fair to say that by the video footage, and to the best of your knowledge, uh, no one was struck before the vehicle approached your presence? Objection. Grounds. Asked and answered. Grounds. Asked and answered. Sustained. Next question. I didn't answer the question. The witness did. To the best of your knowledge, at that point where you observed the vehicle, to your knowledge, no one had been struck at that point. Correct. For the record, you have no foul claim in this matter whatsoever. Objection irrelevant. Sustained. Were you injured in any way during this matter? No. No further questions. Let me redirect. Uh, just very briefly, if you could please, uh, Madam Clerk, put back up number 17. <laughs> And uh, as it's being displayed right now, we are paused at the 33 second mark. Officer Buttrin, can you clearly see north on Buckley Street from this vantage point, sir? Yes, I can. Do you see one plastic barricade um, obstructing travel to go northbound on Buckley Street at that location, sir? Objection, you can clearly see officers there too. Um, jury will disregard at least the attempt to testify by Mr. Brooks. Um, your objection is noted, it's overruled. Uh, he may answer the question. Yes, there's at least one barricade visible there. Okay. And I, I am going to ask the uh, exhibit be replayed in, t in its entirety with no one talking, so we can all listen to hear if the horn is haunting. So, Miss Gussie, please play it again from the beginning. Permission granted. Thank you.
Exhibit 17 has been played in full. Officer Buttron, at any point, were you able to hear the horn honking in that video, sir? No, I was not. Thank you. I don't have any other questions. All right, thank you. You may step down. All right, this will be a good uh, stopping point for our mid-morning break. Uh, we'll take a 15-minute break. All rise for the jury, please. All right, thank you everyone. We'll be back in 15 minutes. We are in recess.
All right, then we are back on the record. Appearances are as they were before. Uh, state may call its next, well, actually, we we'll bring the jury to. in, and then you may call its next witness. Uh, it seemed to like to want to do that these days. Um, all right, have the jury brought back out, please. We still have yet to address the subject matter jurisdiction. Would that be addressed at some point? Mr. Brooks, that's a frivolous matter. We've already addressed that. I direct your attention to the Benaby decision, United States versus Benaby, found at 654 F3rd 753. Um, so I have addressed it. Judicial determination, Your Honor, that you want to address the subject matter jurisdiction. The record stands, Mr. Brooks. Would a verified statement of particulars by affidavit be addressed, Your Honor? Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Attorney Upper, the state may call its next witness. Thank you. The state will call Officer Schneider. <clears throat> Officer, if you would please make your way to the witness stand. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand, and my clerk, Teresa, will swear you in. Thank you. Please have a seat. First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and then spell each. Okay. Uh, my name is Sonia Schneider. Sonia is S-O-N-I-A. Schneider is S-C-H-N-E-I-D-E-R. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Uh, Officer Schneider, uh, how are you currently employed? I'm employed with the City of Waukesha Police Department. How long have you worked in law enforcement? A little over three years now. And were you working on the date of November 20, 2021? I'm sorry, November 21, 2021. <coughs> I was. What were your duties that day? My duties were to secure the parade route and then provide traffic and pedestrian control. Were you assigned to a specific location? Yes, I was uh, to be the intersection of East Main Street and Northeast Avenue. And was that your post throughout the entire event? It was. Do you remember about what time you arrived at that location? I believe it was around 3 p.m. Okay. And when you got there, what were your responsibilities? Or what did you do? We closed down traffic um, from, from Buckley to... Uh, northeast and put up barricades. Okay. And were you dressed in police uniform that day? I was dressed as I am right now. And did you also have on a fluorescent uh, vest? I did. Okay. And that lettering on that vest uh, read police? Yes. Okay. At some point during the parade, uh, was your attention drawn to a vehicle described as a red SUV? It was. How was your attention drawn to that vehicle? 
Initially, we heard a call come out in the area of Frame Park um, about a potential man-knife fight. Um, and then shortly after, I heard radio traffic uh, about a vehicle going through the barricades or past the barricades. What action, if any, did you take? I was standing next to Officer Butrin. Uh, he began to move forward, and um, as I observed the red SUV coming towards Officer Butrin and not stopping, I ran forward to also try to intercept the vehicle. What did you do? Um, I positioned myself right in front of the SUV for about a moment. Uh, and tried to direct the vehicle off to Buckley, which would be to the right of the roadway. Okay, and you, um, you said you positioned yourself right in front of the vehicle, is that right? Yes. So, um, did you go out into the roadway itself? I stood directly in the path of the SUV, which okay. was the entire right, uh, right lane or north side of the streets. Okay, and um, the, uh, did you say anything or gesture in any fashion to the vehicle? I was just gesturing with my hands to try to get the driver to observe me in the street. All right. Do you remember yes. saying anything? Sorry, just yes. for the record, uh, the witness has put both of her hand, hands up with the palms facing out about waist, between waist high and chest high in a stop motion. Go ahead. Do you remember saying anything? I don't recall saying anything. Now, you said your intention was to try and direct the vehicle off onto Buckley Street? It was. Was that, uh, was that a possibility from where the vehicle was located when you first saw it? It was. The vehicle had time to slow down and make that turn. Okay. And uh, you said you, um, you were facing the vehicle head-on, correct? I was... I believe, um, if not exactly head on, at least, you know, to the side where most of the front of my body would be facing it. Okay. So you could see it coming, in other words. Very clearly. And you could see, because you were able to face the vehicle head on, you, could able, you were able to see that at some point you needed to step out of the way so you yourself were not struck. Is that fair to say? Objection. Being the witness. Um, sustain, please, re please rephrase. As you stood in the middle of the road, facing the vehicle, did you stay in that position? <coughs> I did not. I was very concerned the car was going to hit me. So what did you do? I jumped out of the way. Did you uh, make any efforts to uh, uh, interact with the vehicle in any way? Um, I believe that I had like, hit out at the car. Okay. Um, were you able to see the driver of the car? I was. What did you observe about the driver of the car? It looked to be an African-American male um, with brown eyes and brown hair. Did the driver of the SUV uh, react to your presence in any way? When I observed the driver, he had no expression on his face and he was looking straight ahead as if he was looking straight through me. And that never changed? No. Did the driver of the SUV follow your direction and leave the parade route at Buckley? No, uh, he did not. As a matter of fact, he um, appeared to speed up. Are you able to estimate speeds at this location? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. I would estimate the speed to be anywhere from 30 to 40 miles per hour. Were you able to see how many people were inside the SUV as it went by you? I couldn't see the back seat clearly, but I observed only one person in the front of the vehicle. Okay. And that was that uh, the driver, correct? Correct. That you just described for us earlier. Correct. Okay. I'm going to show you an item that's been marked and received as Exhibit 17. And we'll put it up on the screen in front of you first so you can take a look at it, see if you recognize it. <coughs> So, for the record, we've played about the first five seconds or six seconds of the uh, video. Do you recognize this video, Officer Schneider? I do. 
Do you see yourself in this video? Yes. And do you believe uh, this is a true and accurate representation of your uh, actions on that day? Yes. Okay. Uh, permission to publish 17, Your Honor? Permission granted. It's previously been received. So if you could please point out for the jury your location in Exhibit 17. You, you can circle on the screen if you want to touch screen. This is me. And next to you, That's to officer, your right? That's Officer Buttrin. Okay. Me. At this point, um, what are you and Officer Buttrin doing? Uh, we were, again, providing that uh, traffic and pedestrian control for the intersection. Okay. All right, we're going to go ahead and play this uh, clip. It's 37 seconds long, and we'll just play it through, and then we can stop and ask questions if we need to, okay? Okay. Officer Schneider, is that consistent with your recollection of the events? It is. I saw in uh, Exhibit 17 at one point you appeared to leave your post on the south side of the road and run into the road. Is that what happened? Correct. And the vehicle went past you then? It did. The, uh, Excuse me, at that point, Officer Schneider, did you hear the vehicle honking its horn at all? I never heard any honking. Never at any point? Never at any point. Okay. I'd also like to show exhibit number 18, so same thing, we're going to preview it for you first before we show it for the jury, okay? So for the record, we've shown uh, about the first two or three seconds of that clip. To Officer Schneider. Officer Schneider, is Exhibit 18 a true and accurate representation of your actions involving the red SUV on 1121 of 21? It is. Uh, move to admit and permission to publish 18. Any position, Mr. Brooks? Objection. What's the relevancy of the video? Um, the objection is noted, it's overruled, and Exhibit 18 is received. Permission to publish is granted. Um, just one second. Can you, I want to see the counter in the corner. Can you close that note? Thank you. So for the record, this clip is 11 seconds in length. Um, Officer Schneider, can you see yourself in this video at this point? Yes. Can you please circle yourself so the jury knows what to watch for? Oh, right there. Okay. And uh, please clear the screen. All right, we're going to play this video in its entirety now. Again, is that the moment where you ran up to the SUV and tried to stop it? It was. Okay. After the SUV had gone by you, uh, at some point were you aware that individuals further down to your west had been struck by the SUV? Um, yeah, there was what I would call screaming on the radio. Police radio? Correct. Okay. And. Uh, you didn't see the SUV actually strike anybody, correct? I did not see that. When you heard the screaming and heard of the report of problems to your west, what did you do? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. Um, initially, I was just trying to, I didn't know if there was going to be another vehicle coming because we didn't know what was going on. Um, so I was trying to get people out of the roadway. And as soon as I heard the screaming on the radio, um, I began making my way downtown. Did you encounter any people with injuries? I did. I was stopped by numerous people um, who said that their children had potentially been nicked. Um, the worst one was a 
adolescent female that was laying in the road with her family around her. Do you know the first name of that adolescent female? Jessica. Jessica Rogan. Overruled. I'm sorry, your answer may have been um, blocked by Mr. Brooks' objections, but please repeat it. I do not consent to that name, nor am I that person. Noted. You may answer. Jessalyn. Do you know which group or unit in the parade she was with? She was in a dance squad. Okay. Did you attempt to render aid to Jessalyn? I did. Were her injuries significant? They were. At some point, did you go um, further westbound on Main Street and try and tend to more individuals? I walked uh, towards the direction of Mountaintop Coffee, um, and I was directed to stand guard over one of the deceased. Do you know the name of that person? Um, I believed it was Virginia, uh, but I learned later that she was misidentified. Okay. Who was it that you were standing uh, guard over? I overruled. I never um, inquired the, the true name of the individual that I ended up being by. Could you tell which group or unit in the parade that deceased person was associated with? Overruled. She was one of the dancing grannies. And what would be the purpose in having you stand by with a uh, person who had suffered fatal injuries? To preserve the scene. Um, and relieve a community service officer who was standing there initially. Okay. Good. Thank you, Officer Schneider. I don't have any questions beyond that. Thank you. Any cross, Mr. Brooks? Uh, yes. Um, officer Schneider, um, it would be fair to say from the video footage that was shown that you were standing directly next to Officer Butrin, is that correct? That is correct. Um, for any reason, would you have, being that you were so close next to him, not heard the same things that he heard? Objection, I think that calls for speculation. Grounds, grounds. Uh, calls for speculation. It's the same, uh, next question. How long before you saw the approaching vehicle? I heard radio traffic about it uh, going past the barricades, and I would say it was a couple seconds later that we saw it coming down the street. Did you observe anyone being struck at that time? I did not. Did you observe anyone being struck after the vehicle passed you? I did not. Uh, would it be fair to say from the video footage that was shown that the vehicle passed you in Maybe a second, if that. A second to two seconds, yes. Do you think that would be enough time to get a clear description of who was driving the vehicle? Yes, I do. And why do you believe that? Because I saw the driver very clearly. You saw the driver very clearly in one second? Yes, sir. Do you recall if the driver had hair? I do. Do you recall if the driver ha was wearing a hat? I don't recall that. Do you recall anything that the driver may have been wearing? No, I don't. Do you recall seeing anyone in the back seat? I couldn't see the back seat from my position. Why could you not see the back seat? Because there's front seats in the way. Were there any tinting to the vehicle that you saw? Not that I saw. So you saw no tinted windows at all on the vehicle? I do not recall seeing tinted windows. Would it be fair to say from the video that there was uh, a barricade set up at uh, the cross street of Buckley? Yes. Would it be also fair to say that you couldn't turn down Buckley Street because of the barricade? The street was barricaded. 
could you make a turn down the street that was barricaded? You could make a turn, but it was barricaded. How can you make a turn on a barricaded street? How would you be able to do that? If a vehicle were to slow down, the barricade could be moved. So a vehicle would actually have to stop and then make the turn. That's correct. Were there any law enforcement officers posted at the barricade? On that side of the street near Buckley, we had a reserve officer, I believe. Do you recall if anyone, if any one of those officers or officer attempted to stop the vehicle? I couldn't tell you about that. Was there any report of the officer that was standing at that barricade to stop the vehicle? Again, I couldn't tell you about that. So to the best of your knowledge, only you and Officer Butchering attempted to stop the vehicle? To the best of my knowledge, yes. And there were other officers present? The other individual who was present is not a sworn patrol officer. Were they law enforcement? No, they're considered a reserve officer. Were they wearing any gear that may have identified them as an officer? I don't recall what that officer or that reserve officer was wearing. Can we show uh, Exit 17 again? Or Exhibit, sorry, excuse me. Exhibit 17. You want it published or just shown to the witness? Uh, I want it shown to the witness. Permission granted. Actually, can we show it to the whole court? Permission granted, it's been received. Well, before you play it, can you pause it? Before you play it, would it be fair to say that at that intersection that has uh, the red light facing towards the camera, that there is, in fact, someone who appears to be law enforcement standing right there? Objection, vague. Sustained. Can you Refresh. Would it be fair to say that someone standing at that intersection that appears to be wearing the same police vest attire that you are wearing? Objection vague. I Grounds. Think. Mr. Brooks can use the touch screen on his monitor as well, correct? Correct. I, I'm going to overrule the objection, I think. What he was asking is clear enough, so he may answer. There is an individual on the Buckley side of the intersection wearing a high-res traffic vest. Is it similar in any way to the vest that you are wearing? It appears to be so, yes. <clears throat> so would it be fair to say that the appearance of them wearing the same attire as you, that they would be easily identified as law enforcement? I would go so far as to say that they would be at least highly visible to people, yes. Would someone who's not in the law enforcement field possibly for any reason mistake them as law enforcement? Possibly, yes. Can you play it just for just a couple of seconds so we can get a clear look at the individual that I'm referring to? Exactly how many seconds, Mr. Brooks? Um, I don't consent to being called that name, but two, maybe two or three seconds. <laughs> can pause at the three second mark, Your Honor. Thank you. Can you go back a second? Judge, it's not possible to jump back in one second, one second increments. Go back to the, the beginning. Right there. 
Ask your question. Do you know that individual right there? I don't recall who that was, no. Did you see them in at any time attempt to stop the vehicle or redirect the vehicle? I did not observe that myself, no. You can take the exhibit down. You're done with this exhibit? Yeah. Okay, thank you. You can take it down then. Can you put up the exhibit 18 for the court? <coughs> You just want this presented, not played at this moment? I'm just confirming with you. Um, it's probably, I'm probably going to play it too. We'll get it up first. For the, for the entire court. Right, for the record, exhibit 18 is on the screens. Do you want it played, Mr. Brooks? Or do you have a question at this point? Yeah, I want it played, Your Honor, if okay. I may. For the whole thing. Yes, ma'am. All right, permission granted. Oh, my God! Pause it right there. Would it be fair to say that that was just a horn that was heard? No, I don't hear a horn. You don't hear a horn? I do not hear a horn. Can we start that from the beginning? Sure. For the record, Mr. Brooks. When did, yes, when did objection, you objection. I do not consent to being called that name, Your Honor nor do I identify by that name. The defendant has asked the video to be stopped. It was stopped at four seconds in. He's requested that it be replayed. Are you going to have the whole thing replayed or do you want it stopped again at four, four seconds? Uh, maybe around the same point. I'll wait till you say stop then. Okay. We'll make a record of it. Go ahead. Pause it. What the fuck? Would it be fair to say that that was not just a horn that was heard on this video? I will stick with my original answer on that. So your original answer would be that you did not just hear a horn on this video that was being played? That's correct. And for the record, it was stopped at six seconds. So would it be any reason that anyone else would have heard a horn? Objection to speculation. Sustained. Grounds. Sustained calls for speculation on the part of this witness. Did you at any time um, get a chance to read the report by Officer Butcher who was standing right next to you during this? Vin. I did not read his report. Did you have any conversation with him about what he may have observed or heard that evening? Can you clarify what you mean? Did you have any conversation with Officer Butcher about what he may have observed or heard on that evening? I believe that the evening uh, that later after uh, everything had calmed down, we, we had talked for a little bit. Did he state to you that he had heard a horn beeping at any time during your conversation? Objection here saying we've destroyed the question. Grounds. Oh. Sustained. Calls for hearsay. Do you recall what the conversation was about when you talked that evening? I can't recall specifics, no. Did you in any way talk about what had happened that evening at the parade? We, yeah, it would be about the parade, but I can't, again, tell you specifics of what we talked about. You don't recall? I've already answered that. But you're sure that you had some talks about what you may have seen? Objection. Repetitive. Grounds. Asked an answer. Sustained. Next question, please. Just so we're clear for the record, um,
from your recollection, would it be fair to say that Officer Butrin saw the approaching vehicle before you did? Objection. Grounds. Speculation. Grounds. Sustained and calls for speculation on the part of this witness. Next question. At what point did you see the vehicle? Once it was passed Officer Butrin or before it had passed him? I saw the vehicle coming from the White Rock uh, location, so it was before the vehicle had even approached Officer Butrin's location. Any reason why uh, you didn't move to attempt to stop the vehicle when Officer Butrin did? Yes, uh, we oftentimes in our line of work have uh, people meaning no ill will, uh, just disregard police barricades and other things. So initially, I didn't know if the vehicle was being driven by somebody that was just simply distracted or lost or senile. I had no idea. So it would be fair to say that at the time you had uh, no idea what was going on with the vehicle and why it was there. At the time, what I knew was that someone had radioed that a car had disregarded our barricades to keep the parade route closed off. And you heard this on the radio, correct? On police radio, yes. So did you hear a car or did you hear an SUV? I don't recall the exact words that were used. It was a vehicle. Would it be fair to say that you just said that you heard a car over the radio? I don't recall the exact words. Would it be fair to say that it is extremely hard to compare a car with an SUV? Objection, argumentative. Grounds. Sustained. <laughs> Next question. Would you ever mistake a car in an SUV? Objection, argumentative. Grounds. Overruled, she may answer. I think I'm pretty good at knowing the difference. So when you heard the radio call, were you expecting a car or SUV? I was expecting a vehicle, red in color, to be coming my direction. Would it be fair to say that you before it didn't state the color of the vehicle that you were expecting? I think the question is vague, Your Honor, objection. as to grounds. when she may grounds. or may not. Mr. Brooks, hold on. Let her state the objection. Questions vague as to when she may or may not have indicated the color of the car, Your Honor. Grounds. Uh, I'll sustain the objection. Please rephrase. It's, it's sustained as to the form of the question. At any time during the radio um, report, was there any report of the color of the vehicle, as you say, in the report that you heard over the radio? The exact color of the vehicle over the radio, I do not recall hearing. I know that I saw a red SUV coming from White Rock. Would it be fair to say that you heard the radio call before you saw the vehicle? <laughs> Absolutely, I, I heard it before I saw it. So would it be fair to say that you couldn't have known what the color of the vehicle would be and what vehicle was being referred to? There was only one vehicle on the parade route um, from what I saw. Um, Were there any uh, radio reports that the, ve the vehicle had struck anyone at that time that you heard? No, I didn't hear anyone say that the vehicle had struck anyone. Was there any reports at that time over the radio that you heard of a description of who may have been driving the vehicle? 
No, I don't recall a description coming out over the radio prior to me seeing the vehicle come across my path. So would it be fair to say that the radio report was pretty vague? Objection, argumentative. Grounds? Sustained. Were there any reports that you know of, rather by radio or from people who were present in your area that you were, that they may have heard honking from the vehicle that approached? Objection, speculation. Grounds? Um, overruled. The way it was phrased, he asked if she had any information. So she may answer. I don't have any information about honking. Can you recall about what time you saw the approaching vehicle? I don't know the exact time, no. Were you injured in any way by the vehicle? I was not injured. So it would be fair to say that you haven't filed a claim in this matter, correct? Objection, irrelevant. Grounds? I'm overruled. She may answer. I have not filed a claim for this. So it will be also fair to state that you are, are not an injured party in this matter, correct? Objection, asked and answered. Grounds? Um, sustained. Could you state for the record who subpoenaed you to testify in this matter today? The state. And when you say the state, uh, who are you referring to exactly? The state of Wisconsin. To the best of your knowledge, being in law enforcement for some time, Have you ever had any interaction with the state whatsoever? Objection, irrelevant, Grounds. vague. Grounds. Sustained. Next question. <clears throat> Did you physically talk to the state about testifying here this morning? Objection. Grounds. Vague and irrelevant. Grounds. Do you mean to ask her if she spoke with the DA's office? Did she speak to the plaintiff? Sustained. Next question. How long have you known the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. Next question. Have you read the complaint in this matter? To your recollection? I have. Um, I believe I've skimmed it over. I haven't read it in its entirety. Would it be any reason why you didn't read the complaint in its entirety? Objection, irrelevant. Grounds? Sustained. Did you have any idea that you may be called to testify in this matter? Um, I, I did see it as a possibility, yes. So it would be fair to say that if you knew that it was a possibility that you may be called to testify, would it be fair to say that it would be best to acquire all the knowledge that you can acquire before testifying? Objection, argumentative. Grounds? Sustained. Are you aware that all police departments are funded by the state of Wisconsin? Objection, irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. If you weren't testifying here this morning, would you be on duty? Yes, I would be. Is that why you came in uniform? Yes, it is. So it would be fair to say that right now you're on the clock? Yes, I am. Being paid by whom? By the city of Waukesha. Is the city of Waukesha in the state of Wisconsin? Yes, it is. And
Who funds the Waukesha Police Department? Objection. Grounds. Sustained. During your attempt to stop the vehicle, do you recall the vehicle trying to strike anyone? I did not see the vehicle deviating in any way, no. Do you recall it trying to strike anyone? I think it hasn't answered, Your Honor. Sustained. By, by you saying that you didn't see the vehicle deviate, can you clear, clarify for the record what that means, in your opinion? When I saw the vehicle coming towards my direction, it was driving in a straight line. So would it be fair to say that that does not clarify what you mean by deviate? Objection. It's argumentative, sustained. To the best, as far as you recall, you didn't see or hear that the vehicle has struck anyone. That'd be fair to say? And answered, Your Honor. Grounds. Sustained. Do you know of any uh, cross streets before you attempted to stop the vehicle that may have been barricaded? <clears throat> we had uh, barricades up in the area of White Rock Avenue. Um, I wasn't up there at any point in time, so I couldn't give you the exact location of every barricade. But you do know that there were um, pretty much barricades throughout the parade route, would that be fair to say? Yes, we needed to secure it. Do you know of any uh, attempts to stop the vehicle before it came to the area that you were in? Well, I personally observed Officer Butcherin attempt to stop the vehicle. Do you know of any attempts to stop the vehicle before the vehicle approached your area? Based on the radio traffic I heard, um, it sounded like uh, officers had attempted at that time, but I didn't see it, so I couldn't say for certain. So it would be fair to say that you don't recall. Objection. That's Grounds. not fair to say, Your Honor. It's Grounds. a misstatement of her testimony. Grounds. Sustain it mischaracterizes the testimony. So to the best of your knowledge, um, Officer Butchering was the first person that you observed attempting to stop the vehicle. That's correct. And then yourself. That is correct. With no injuries. Can you clarify, please? You, Officer Butchering, or you were not injured in your attempt to stop the vehicle? I believe that's correct. You believe that was correct? I don't recall Butrin complaining of any injuries, so I couldn't say for certain. Were you yourself injured? I have already answered that. You stated that you uh, skimmed through the complaint uh, for this matter. Would that be fair to say? Objection. 
Objection asked and answered. We need to move on to a new topic, Your Honor. Grounds. Sustained. It's been asked and answered. We need a new topic, what? Mr. Brooks, under 906.11. I'm directing you to move on. I'm just trying to find out what would be the reason not to read the whole complaint. That's all. Irrelevant, Your Honor. So, uh, so grounds. There's no question. Did you hear of any uh, incident at Frame Park? Objection asked and answered. I didn't ask this. Overruled. She may answer. I did answer that earlier in my testimony. You may answer it again. Okay. Please. I heard uh, that there was a man knife call, is how it came out, potentially in Frame Park. Um, at any point that evening, did you follow up on that report? I did not. Uh, do you, to the best of your knowledge, do you know if, uh, are you aware of any officer? following up on that report? The officers that were dispatched to that call, of which I don't recall who they were, would have been in charge of that. Did you learn any any information about a knife being <laughs> found? I did not. To the best of your knowledge, do you recall any domestic dispute coming over the radio? What point in time? Um, the evening during the parade, November 21st. I don't recall specifically a, the, the terms domestic being used over the radio in any way, no. To the best of your knowledge, do you recall uh, a vehicle being found on Maple Street? Yes, I do recall. Um, did you respond there directly or do you know if, well, let me take that back. Did you respond there directly? No, I did not. Do you recall what that report uh, was saying over the radio? Objection, vague. Grounds. Sustained as to the form of the question. It's also beyond the scope of the direct exam. Um, unless you have information, she was involved in that. Mr. Brooks, move on. Estimate the speed was of the vehicle you attempted to stop. Objection asked and answered. Sustained. I don't recall asking the speed. This witness has answered about speed multiple times, but if you want her to state it again, overruled. You may answer. I said approximately 30 to 40 miles per hour. To the best of your knowledge, would, would there be any reason why an officer standing right next to you would not estimate it at that speed? Objection. Argumentative. It's argumentative and it calls for speculation on the part of this witness, so it's sustained. Do you know of any officers that was in your vicinity that gave a speed estimate of the vehicle you attempted to stop? Objection irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. Okay. 
No more further questions. Right, thank you. Any redirect? Uh, very briefly, uh, Officer Schneider, on cross examination, you told Mr. Brooks that you saw the driver of the vehicle quite clearly. Do you remember that? Objection. I do not consent to being called that name, and I would respectfully ask not to be identified with an unknown <laughs> individual. Your objection is noted. It's overruled. Go ahead, Attorney Offer. Do you see the driver of the red SUV in the courtroom here today, Officer Schneider? Objection, I do. hearsay. Overruled, she may answer. I'd ask Mr. Brooks be directed to remove his mask so that Officer Schneider can identify him, please. Objection, I never heard an uh, answer to the question. It has not been answered, Mr. Brooks. Uh, please remove your mask. Thank you. Officer Schneider, is the driver of the red SUV that you've just described for this jury present in this courtroom today. Objection, yes. hearsay. Can you please point him out by where he's seated and what he's wearing? He is seated over here at the table wearing a gray suit. That's the man you saw driving the red SUV as it sped past you? Yes, it is. Thank you, I don't have any other questions. On the issue of identification only, do you have any questions for this witness? Yes, I do. Um, you did state that you saw the driver of the vehicle and it had the driver had hair and you stated brown eyes and brown hair, correct? That is what I said. You also stated that you can see somewhat what they was wearing by hat or... That's incorrect. I did not say that. So you were able to see the driver of the vehicle's entire head? I was able to see hair, which is what I have said previously. Would it be fair to say that the alleged defendant that you just identified on the record for the court does not have hair? You have shaved your head, yes. Would it be fair to say that you have not seen the alleged defendant shave his head? Objection. Relevance. Grounds. Overruled. She may answer. I presume you mean the act of. The act of. I have not witnessed him actively shaving his head. So would it be fair to say that, to the best of your knowledge, you do not know, in fact, if the alleged defendant shaved his head? I am looking at the individual who was driving the SUV, and he now has a shaved head. That doesn't answer the question. It does. Next question. And you stated eye color, correct? Yes. Can you see the alleged defendant's eye color from where you are sitting? I cannot. No further questions. All right, thank you. You may step down. She may. Thank you. Well, we're going to take our lunch break now. I have information that the lunch for the jurors will be up in about 10 minutes. So rather than start a witness just to take a break around that time, we'll take our lunch now. It will be at least an hour, uh, maybe an hour and 15 minutes. But I'd ask the parties be back in an hour. And then also advise the jury and Mike and Pete what time I need them back. All right, thank you everyone. I'll rise for the jury.
All right, thank you. Uh, we are in recess. Let's have the parties back at 12.35. Uh, we can address any issues outside the presence of the jury if need be. Otherwise, be prepared for your next witness from the state. Thank you, thank you everyone.
wishes to address at this time before the jury is brought back out from the state? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I did want to uh, revisit the topic of the subpoenas that Mr. Brooks has requested to, to have issued on his behalf. All right. I had a chance to go through them over the lunch hour, and first of all, he did not write a case caption on any of the subpoenas, which I guess is not surprising. The case number is there, so. I don't think that's a major uh, concern, but for most of the individuals uh, on the bottom half of the form, he indicated that the witnesses are required to bring with them something, and usually he would write all police reports or your sworn statements and police reports, things like that. That is improper to direct these witnesses to bring these items. They are not the... Um, uh, records custodians, they do not have access to these things, and I do not want to have these subpoenas served in this format, as I think it would result in uh, confusion to the witnesses. So I don't know if they could be reissued removing that or what the court would recommend, but it's not appropriate to tell a witness to bring all police reports to the trial. Mr. Brooks? Uh, I, like I say, it's, and it's well on the record that I've never had to fill out subpoenas before. I don't understand how they're supposed to be filled out correctly. That's why I stated that any assistance that I can get would, would be of great benefit to me because I have never done this before. So I didn't know if I was supposed to fill out that box, if I wasn't supposed to fill out that box. It was the same thing with the date. That's why I kind of left that blank because I was unsure of what I was supposed to do. I was just kind of filling out what made sense to me to fill out as the person that would be wanting the subpoena served. So I, I'm, I'm not understanding what's, what I did wrong. Well. First of all, you do need to include the case caption. Whether you agree with it or not, sir, that is the case caption in this case, so what it should be. the case caption? Uh, uh, I'm not sure what the case caption is. I, I, was, I was basically um, writing the Walkershaw Parade case because, I mean, the only time I've ever been referred to anything with caption is sort of like when you take a picture on social media or something and it, and it has caption and you kind of just refer to whatever the picture is Sir, about, do you know the, some of the legal documents that I've given you from this case, for example, the motion for other acts evidence, and then your then attorney's response to that, at the very top, there's a case caption. It's where it reads, um, State of Wisconsin versus Daryl E. Brooks. Okay, so that's the, it has the plaintiff, it has the V or VS for versus, and then it has who the defendant is. Frankly, it doesn't matter if you write in plaintiff or defendant. I'm more concerned about uh, the other indicators that I've just said. And so that will need to be added to your subpoenas. And then in terms of the issue raised by the state, um, it is true that Individuals who would have provided police statements, meaning a statement to the police, whether written or verbal, um, all of that information and those documents that go along with those, that information would be in the custody of the Waukesha Police Department or the any other police agency that may have made a report that's uh, referenced in it. So I don't, most of them I would presume were done by uh, officers with the city of Waukesha Police Department or detectives. And so the, the individuals were, at least as far as I can tell, that are citizens where it says sworn statement and police reports. Um, if what you are looking for are copies of their statements to police, I presume you have that in discovery. If you're looking for any other sworn statement, I think you would need to be more specific I don't want to confuse the witnesses, but the fact remains, sir, it, you're the one filling out these subpoenas, and if there's something specific that you want, then you should um, you should include that. 
whether the individual who comes to court either understands what they're looking for what you're looking for or whether they have that in their possession is probably a different topic entirely um, I guess that's I was just filling in uh, filling it out by with I mean like I said this I don't, I don't I've never had to do this before so I was just kind of filling it out by what made sense to fill it out I didn't want to leave too much blank and so I, I just filled it out by as best that I could um, would it would it please the court if I could uh, fill them out properly and resubmit them absolutely I'm going to just print off a basic pleading that's in the file already it happens to be the one I pulled up defendants witness list not yours but was filed by your prior counsel I'm going to print that off so that you can see um, where it says state of Wisconsin circuit court Waukesha County and then branch two and then that just indicates what that we're in the state of Wisconsin it's the circuit court as opposed to an appellate court um, it's Waukesha County as opposed to one of the other uh, 71 other counties and then branch two is a specific branch in Waukesha County and then again the caption underneath is uh, state of Wisconsin versus Daryl E Brooks that should be included on your subpoenas does have the case number so that's good your penmanship is very meticulous you have the date and time and the judge um, you, uh, there is a spot for on behalf of you can put since they're on behalf since you're issuing them you can put either defendant or the name that you want to indicate on that um, can I put the name that I identify under since I'm um, in third party you can if you put that name that's fine I think it's pretty clear um, these are not being issued by the state of Wisconsin for example or on behalf of like the district attorney's office so um, that's fine and then again if you want to redo we'll give you do you have new forms madam clerk so we can do you I'm have extras sitting right here. what was that not sitting right here okay do you have any extras I know we've given you a bunch or do you need new forms um, I really only brought the ones that I was required okay. to turn in today. That's okay. so. um, what we'll do is we'll make sure in the next available break I'll have my clerk count off how many there are we'll get them reprinted I think they keep forms in the clerk's office and then put the date on and then you can fill them out again and then we'll hand them back over to the state do you intend these subpoenas to be the equivalent of your witness list or were you going to file something separately um, I was intending for this to be my witness list I think that would probably be easier any objection if, from the state no we understand I think we've been given fair notice your honor okay I do have some other uh, challenges on some of these subpoenas not again that we need to necessarily address right now but I would like to advise the court and the defendant that he's requested a subpoena for a person identified as Sammy Fleischman we have learned that Ms. Fleischman has relocated to the state of Texas therefore we will not be able to secure her appearance here at the trial on behalf of Mr. Brooks if he wishes to make arrangements for transportation for Ms. Fleischman he may do so himself Ms. Fleischman it is my understanding was the woman who organized the parade or was one of the people that organized the parade but that's how she's identified in the reports and therefore her relevance may or may not be uh, an issue as well all right did you hear the state advise you of that yeah I, I would I wouldn't even begin to try to know how I can do something like that from a jail cell I'm pretty much broke <laughs> Well, you're advised though, if she's out of state, there's other procedures would have to be followed. And uh, the state is not obligated to make those arrangements since it's an out of state witness at this point, okay? Did you hear me say that? I follow. All right, um, thank you. Anyone else on the subpoena list? 
I mean, there's others that we have objections to, but I don't know if you want to address that right now, Your Honor. Well, I'd like to have you put them on the record so okay. that Mr. Brooks knows, and if he wants to respond now, that's fine. Otherwise, we can take it up a little bit later. Uh, the other two would be Erica Patterson and Detective Steve Guth, seeing as they have already testified and were subject to cross-examination, we would request an offer of proof as to uh, the what relevant testimony, if any, they may offer. And then there was one of the parents of the victims, Kathleen Urell. She was not present at the parade. Um, and it's really unknown what type of testimony he would want to elicit from her. So we would be requesting uh, an offer of proof to establish the relevancy of those witnesses, Your Honor. Do you want to address that now or have an opportunity to think about that and address it perhaps at the end of the day? Um, it's, it's really nothing to think about. I think it's, I think it's pretty clear. Um, they are, besides... Um, Ms. Patterson and um, uh, Detective Guth, I mean, as far as with them, I think it would be relevant because we have uh, paperwork that was filed by the district attorney about um, there being no factual basis nor no domestic violence incident on November 20th, which they testified to. I think that that's perjury. So that should be... Well, you're giving me an argument, I guess, on the relevance of their testimony, sir. But as I recall the testimony, you were the one asking the questions about the 20th. The state dismissed that charge. I granted that request to dismiss it. Um, I, there's nothing that you are bringing to my attention that would that I can tell would be perjury, but I, I don't know if what you're trying to tell me is you'd like to question them about their credibility They're because still, that charge, like, explain to me a little bit further. It, it would be uh, a lot to do with credibility and also a few questions that I believe would still be relevant to even the events of the 21st. There's, there's still some relevant things that should that I feel should be answered, that I feel the, the jury deserves to know. Well, I'm going to give him some leeway. He's a pro se defendant. Um, he has a right to call witnesses. These are two witnesses that testified. He did have the opportunity to cross-examine them, but um, I think it's uh, reasonable for him to want to question them further, and I'll keep them on your witness list. Um, and instruct the state to assist as they have already offered. What about this Kathleen Urell? I know she's on their potential witness list that was filed. Um, and that, to correct, I apologize for interrupting, but I did misspeak. She was at the parade, but she did not see, she cannot testify to anyone being struck or injured by the SUV other than her own children that she learned after the fact. And she cannot identify the driver. All right, Mr. Brooks. It's, it's still relevancy there. She, uh, she's, she was at the parade, and as we just heard right now, for the record, that she would be directly affected by it, by her family being victims in the, in the matter. Also, she gave statements and she filed a report. Uh, I feel like her testimony would be relevant to the matter. All right, I'll keep her on the list as well. Anyone else on the list of subpoenas? Uh, no, Your Honor, we'll just await to receive the corrected subpoenas and then we will endeavor to have them served. All right, thank you. Just thank you. One, one thing real quick, Your Honor. Um, Go ahead. And if, I, and if I'm miss misspeaking right here, feel free to correct me. Um, you said something to the effect about um, getting uh, more paperwork in during the lunch hour? What, what was that referring to? I, was that referring I believe to the it subpoenas? was referring to a witness list. If you, had, if you had one, but what you're indicating is you'd like the uh, grouping of subpoenas and the witnesses who are identified to be reflective of your witness list without filing an independent witness list. Well, I missed this subpoena. It's only one but I would have to change it because it was filled out in the same way as the other ones. 
My mistake for missing it, I got a lot of paper. What's here. the name on it? Uh, Catrice ba 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 I don't know, it's, it's spelled. All right, I don't want to butcher it. That's okay, hand it to the bailiff and then I'll take a look at it. It's, it's filled out in the correct, um, I mean the incorrect, just like the other one, so I would have to essentially change it, but I just wanted that for the record that that was lurking in my paperwork. That's okay. Thank you for providing that. The state, the last name is B A B. I A S Z. Yes, we're familiar with that witness. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, we'll add that to the list. State still have the originals that I handed over to you. I do. All right, why don't we give all of those back to Mr. Brooks so that he has those. Uh, including the one in my hand. We'll make sure he gets new forms. And then if you could just make sure you provide those at the end of the day today or by the end of the day. Um, well, I, I don't know if I'll be able to fill all those out on a break. If need be, I'll let you sit here at the end of the day until you get them filled out so to make sure the state gets them right away. Okay. I can I can uh, try to knock you knock out as many as I can during the breaks to make it easier. We'll but give I'm you not, time. I'm not sure that you know. We'll give you time. Don't worry about it. All right. Anything else from the state? No. Thank you, Mr. Brooks. Anything else from you? Yes. <laughs> uh, at this point, you probably I'm probably beating the dead horse, but I just have to stay for the record anyway. I, I would like to direct your honor to, um, I believe it's Milo versus United States, 505 F2D 1026. Are you familiar with that, your honor? Not off the top of my head, but I can pull it up. And also Hagen's versus Levine, 415 US 533. And those cases are uh, being brought up because of the uh, continuing asking of me about the jurisdiction that I've been challenging. I believe they're very, very relevant to this matter. Could I ask Mr. Brooks to repeat those numbers again? Uh, for both? Yes, please. Uh, for Milo, I believe it is, or it might be Milo, but Milo. Uh, M I L O. Milo. Is that no? Is it M I L O the spelling? M E L O. Oh, I had it right the first time. Okay. Uh, five zero five. F two D. One zero two six. And. Hagen's versus Levine, 415 US 533. Anything specific you want to draw my attention to? Well, there's um, cases that challenge the jurisdiction, which I've been uh, doing, challenging the jurisdiction. Um, Milo versus United States states once jurisdiction is challenged, the court cannot proceed when it is clear when it is clearly appears that the court lacks jurisdiction. The court has no authority to reach merits, but rather should dismiss the action. For the record, Mr. Brooks, the Hagen's versus Levine is four one five U.S. five twenty eight. Perhaps well, you're drawing my attention to page 533, but the site for the case is 415 U.S. 528. That could be so. I apologize if I'm stating it wrong. 
Um, what about the other I believe cases? it's, well, the information I have is 533. Um, that states the, the law requires proof of jurisdiction to appear on the record of the administrative agency in all administrative proceedings. We have yet to, to prove the jurisdiction. It has yet to be proven. I filed a motion. Um, I've stated on the record numerous times. Um, I have yet to get an answer. And you're specifically referring to the documents you filed on October 3rd? Um, I've been challenging jurisdiction since the beginning of trial, probably as far back as when I became a, a pro per defendant myself. Also, you can look at U.S. versus Lopez. You can look at, I think that's from, it may be from 1995. Do you have a citation? Um, just really quick. I may have to find it in my paperwork for the Lopez. All right, well, you locate that. When you find it, let me know outside the presence of the jury. I'll take your request under advisement. I'll take a look at these cases. I don't believe they're going to change my previous ruling uh, that the issues that you have raised are without merit uh, as previously ruled on. But I'll take a look, and if I feel I need to address it further, I'll give you an opportunity to argue. I, I believe it should be addressed. Thank you, Yara. All right. Then with that, we are still going to continue, Mr. Brooks, and we'll bring the jury out. I presume the state has the next witness available. Yes. All right, Madam Clerk. Did you say you thought Lopez was from 1995? I believe that's the one that he's referring to. If it's the same case, it's 514 U.S. 549 for the state. 
Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. State may call its next witness. Thank you. And the state calls Battalion Chief Jim Hawkinson. Sir, please make your way to the witness stand. When you get there, please remain standing and raise your right hand. My clerk, Teresa, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. When you are seated, please state your first and last names for the record and spell each. Jim Hawkinson, J-I-M. H-A-A-K-E-N-S-O-N. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Uh, how are you employed? I'm employed as a battalion chief shift commander for the city of Waukesha Fire Department. How long have you held that position? Uh, I've been a battalion chief for six years. How long in total have you worked for the Waukesha Fire Department? 22 years. Did you have any other type of fire or emergency work before you worked for WFD? I did. I worked for the city of Pewaukee uh, I believe I started in 1996. What kind of things are you responsible for as a battalion chief? Uh, as a battalion chief, I manage the day-to-day uh, -day operations of an entire shift of uh, firefighters, lieutenants, company officers, those kinds of things. Could you describe for us in general terms how the Waukesha Fire Department is organized? Yes, the uh, fire department is organized into three separate shifts. Uh, these shifts are divided into five stations. Uh, the stations are strategically located throughout the city to provide response uh, to any area of the city in a very timely fashion. Um, minimum staffing, meaning the minimum number of people on duty every day, is 26 personnel. Which of the five stations is closest to the downtown Waukesha area? That would be Station 1. Okay. Can you describe for us the resources uh, that are available at each of the five stations? Uh, there are five ambulances and either three engines and two ladder trucks so at each station there is a heavy piece of apparatus a engine or a truck and an ambulance were you on duty uh, working as a battalion chief on sunday november 21st of 2021 i was were you aware that the waukesha christmas parade was going to be taking place that day i was in your capacity as um, a battalion chief for the fire department, were you aware of any preparations that had been underway with your department knowing that that event was going on? Yes, uh, we had a unit that participated in the parade. Um, we also received an incident action plan from the police department relative to the parade operations. Your Honor, Exhibit 1 is a map that's previously been admitted and published. I'd ask to publish that again for everybody. Permission granted. Mr. Hawkinson, if you direct your attention to the screen in front of you, this is Exhibit 1. Do you recognize this exhibit? I do. Are you able to point out for us on this map where uh, Station 1 would be, or is it not on the map? Uh, it is not marked on the map. However, it is uh, at the intersection of Ann Street, I'm sorry, Fuller Street and St. Paul Avenue. Could you... It's a touch screen in front of you. Could you just draw a little X where the map, uh, where Station 1 would be if uh, the map were a little bigger? It would be right there. Oh, I see. Okay. And you've used a yellow arrow to designate that. Yeah. So it appears. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> were you at Station 1 that day? I was. Okay. At what point did your department first respond to a parade-related call for service on the afternoon of November 21st? Uh, we received an alert at approximately 1639, that's 439 p.m. What was the nature of that alert? Initially, it was an unknown problem, um, but given radio traffic that we had heard, uh, we assumed it to be a vehicle versus pedestrian. Okay, and what did your department resources do in response to getting that alert? Uh, everyone immediately assembled and began the response that was dispatched. Everyone from? Station 1 at that time. Okay. And what happened next? Uh, in route, we began to uh, hear additional radio traffic to numerous reports of other people being struck. Uh, at that point, the dispatcher uh, asked if I would uh, like to upgrade the alarm, which I did, bringing all five stations immediately to the area. Okay. And let me back up for a minute. Before getting a call about pedestrian vehicle, 
Did your department respond to any other calls for service within the minutes before that call? Not that I recall. Um, we prepared to respond based on radio traffic we had heard uh, referencing a uh, call in Frame Park. Okay, and what was the nature of that call in Frame uh, Park? Uh, on the police dispatch, it sounded as though there was some sort of incident with a man and a knife. Okay, and what did your department do as, in response to receiving that dispatch? Uh, we, we began to move towards the, the uh, apparatus because we knew that uh, Station 1 would be responding to that. And did anybody from your department get to that call in time? No. We were never dispatched to it. Um, by the time we got out to the apparatus bay and, uh, and to the rigs, uh, the, we could start hearing the radio traffic uh, regarding the vehicles and the pedestrians. Uh, and that was occurring on Main Street downtown. Okay. Now we'll fast forward again to the point where we left off, where you said you had upgraded the call to all five stations, right? That's correct. What happened next? Uh, we began our response. Uh, getting to the scene was a bit uh, difficult due to the uh, large crowd of personnel fleeing downtown. Um, our response route took us right up Bar Barstow to Main Street, uh, and we turned right on the main, and, and that's uh, when we arrived. At some point, did you or your department become aware that it was going to be, it was going to require more than just your department's resources to respond to this? Uh, absolutely. As we began to hear more and more reports coming in from uh, officers on scene, uh, we began to realize the scope of this was exceeding our uh, response capabilities. Um, and at that time, I upgraded uh, the alarm to a, uh, a Mabus box alarm uh, for life safety. Can you explain for the jury what a Mabus box alarm is? Right. Uh, Mabus is a system um, called the Mutual Aid Box Alarm System. And in this system, it Structure, it is structured so that a pre-designated uh, type and amount of resources come at each level. Uh, so for example, this uh, box alarm brought an additional four ambulances, an engine, a squad, and three chiefs, uh, in addition to all the other resources that were coming. And is that where the scope of the response stopped? Absolutely not. Uh, as uh, we got on scene and began the triage uh, patients, uh, determining their level of acuity, uh, and, and certainly uh, over the almost half mile uh, uh, of the parade route where we found them, uh, we realized quickly that uh, this was going to require additional resources and we upgraded uh, to the second alarm level. I believe it was 4.52 in the afternoon. Okay. And what resources came with that second box level? That would be another four ambulances, another three chiefs, and another fire engine. Um, do you recall what municipalities or, or other uh, partners that you work with were part of that response? I, I would do them a disservice and leave them out for sure. There was a, a total of 15 municipalities that responded, I believe 23 units in totality. Uh, the Waukesha Christmas Parade, that's an annual event, is that right? That's correct. And have you been uh, the shift commander or battalion chief on duty for that event before 2021? Yes. Um, overruled, he may answer. I believe he answered yes, his answer may stand. Just as a reminder, if there's an objection, wait till I rule. Thank you. Based on your experience in that position, in terms of public attendance, so the number of people attending the event, where does the annual Waukesha Christmas Parade rank uh, on the large public events that are held downtown each year? Uh, it, it certainly is one of the largest attended, um, if not the largest. Uh, Fourth of July is also very well attended as far as parades go. Your department uh, and the partners that responded in response to your box alarm procedure, you didn't transport every single victim or person who was struck in the parade incident, is that right? Objection irrelevant. Overall. Uh, that is correct. We did not transport every person. We transported a total of 24 patients. Do you know how uh, any other people were transported away from the scene? I believe... Overruled. He may answer. I believe there were uh, approximately 49 additional patients transported. What time did your last ambulance leave the downtown area? Uh, the last a a a patient was transported by ambulance from the scene at approximately 17.35, uh, 5.35 p.m. I believe that's all the questions I have for this witness. All right, do you have any cross-exam? Um, I do. Um, did you ever receive 
Well, first of all, good afternoon, Chief. Uh, did you ever receive any additional information about the uh, man with a knife in Frame Park? I re other than the radio uh, report or the traffic on the radio? Yeah, other than that. No, I did not. Uh, to the best of your knowledge, do you recall that ever being uh, taken care of? I as have no, as, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, as far as, far as uh, do you know if any, if there were any uh, law enforcement that responded to that radio I, report? I am unaware uh, of that. I don't have any knowledge of that. Um, do you recall make sure I get the language of this correct. Um, do you recall making a report with Officer Wagner? I do not. I could be looking at the wrong thing prepared by my To the best of your knowledge, does uh, is Dan Rulo a firefighter on Ambulance 51? Dan Rulo is a member of the department. Uh, I do not recall if he was working that day or if he was assigned to Ambulance 51 that day. Do you recall being notified, and I know it's kind of the same question, but it's, it's phrased different in what I'm reading, so I just want to clarify it. Were you notified of a possible stabbing? Uh, again, the radio traffic I received was an incident uh, possibly involving a knife. Could you clarify what a uh, hot wash is? A hot wash is a term used to, uh, to discuss events immediately after they happen. It's typically done after incidents of significance um, to gather as much information as possible immediately after and to see how everybody's doing. Did you respond to the uh, the parade route yourself? I responded to the incident on the parade route. That is correct. Um, when you arrived to the scene, uh, was there still any immediate danger that you recall? It was difficult to gauge if there was any immediate danger. Um, radio traffic on the police side uh, indicated that there had been shots fired, uh, and certainly we had a large number of people fleeing. Um, so that would be a, a tough question to answer. Did you receive uh, any information about um, the shots fired, who they may have been fired by? I did not. Did you receive any, any information that someone may have been uh, injured by the shots that were fired? I did not receive any information uh, regarding that.
Do you recall who were the first arriving units to the scene? Uh, the first arriving units to the scene were myself, uh, Engine 1, and Ambulance 51. So would it be fair to say that um, you would be B-10? That is correct. And do you recall where you were positioned at when you arrived? Yes, uh, we turned right onto Main Street from Barstow, and we ended up probably 50 to 100 feet from that intersection, uh, and I would say southwest of that intersection on Main Street. Do you recall of uh, um, any law enforcement attempting to clear the transportation routes? Uh, at one point, I spoke with uh, Sergeant Tokarski and asked uh, him if he could assist me in opening up a route to get to the casualty collection point that we established. Do you recall any loss of power in the downtown area? Yes, uh, I believe 1740, so 540 p.m. sometime around then, uh, the entire, uh, all the lights went out downtown. Uh, the downtown area lost power. Uh, do you recall receiving any information about what may have been the problem with, with the power? Uh, not at the time. However, later that evening, uh, it was determined that uh, a power line had gone down due to the high winds that evening. So to the best of your knowledge, it wasn't uh, due to the, the incident that you were responding to? That is correct. I do not believe it was related. Do you recall about what time you finally was, uh, left the area? I believe we cleared the scene uh, about 6.40, 6.45 p.m. Do you recall if it uh, was already nightfall by that time that you responded? Uh, just to clarify, are you asking when we responded or when we left? Uh, roughly around the time you responded. Do you recall it being nighttime, dusk? It, it was not dark outside yet. It was probably close to dusk. I mean, there was still light in the sky. Definitely nighttime when you left the scene. That is correct. Did you receive any information about uh, why you needed to respond so quickly to the scene? I'm going to have to ask you to clarify that. We were dispatched by our, uh, our dispatcher to respond to uh, uh, an incident and um, in, in my line of work that usually means you respond very quickly. No, uh, no information was given why you needed to respond so quickly? Uh, our system is set up uh, so that our calls are triaged and our response levels are triaged uh, accordingly. And in this case, this would have been a priority one response or uh, an immediate response with lights and siren. So it's really just get the call and go? That is correct. So to... To your knowledge, you didn't yet have information about why you needed to respond, but you know it was something that needed to be responded to quickly. That is correct. We were initially dispatched to an unknown incident, and then it was clarified uh, in route, as I mentioned, when the, uh, uh, the alarm was upgraded, that it was a motor vehicle versus pedestrian incident. Motor, ve motor vehicle versus pedestrian incident. Um, have you ever responded to any 
a cause like that before? Yes, sir. You mentioned something about a, a accident plan, or am I, if I'm wrong, you can correct me, but was that what I heard, an accident plan? Uh, incident action Inc plan. Incident, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, what, what does that entail? Uh, it's a plan that's put together um, usually prior to or during an event uh, that describes how uh, resources are going to be deployed uh, to manage or handle the events. So it's sort of like just having something in place in case of. Uh, it goes a step further than that. It's a, a plan that's in place or implemented, uh, for example, in this case, to control access to the downtown area, uh, to um, identify who is responsible for what tasks, such as clearing vehicles or establishing parade uh, Parade route integrity, those kinds of things. Outside of the uh, parade uh, incident, to your knowledge, was there any more um, needed responses to any other incidents that may have been in the area? While we were on scene at the parade, uh, I believe that we uh, received two other calls for service uh, in the city. Um, to your knowledge, do you recall if they were directly related? I do not. Uh, no further questions. Thank you, any redirect? Very briefly. Uh, on cross-examination, there was reference made to a casualty collection point. Can you describe what that is? So a casualty collection point is uh, something that's established uh, when there's a mass casualty incident or a large number of casualties or people injured. Uh, the goal of it is to get people to a centralized point where they can be receive treatment and triage or determining the severity of their injuries uh, so that they can be transported directly from that area. Uh, it, it uh, is the most efficient way to handle a mass casualty. That's not something that you would set up in a routine pedestrian versus motor vehicle incident. Is that correct? Objection, you're saying. Um, overruled, he may answer. That is not something that we would normally uh, set up in a pedestrian versus motor vehicle accident. Can we put exhibit one back up on the screen, please? Go ahead. Could you circle for us uh, on the screen in front of you where the casualty collection point was set up here? Objection, relevant. Um, overruled, he may answer. That is supposed to be the intersection of Clinton and Maine. Okay. And uh, from there, where were the injured people transported to? Uh, from that point, they were taken to five area hospitals. Okay. So not just Waukesha Memorial? That is correct. Waukesha Memorial is just up the hill off the side of this map, is that right? That is correct. Okay. Uh, what other hospitals, if you recall? Uh, Aurora Summit, uh, Freighter at Menominee Falls, Children's Hospital, and Freighter Hospital. And aside from uh, ambulances involved with your department and the other responding agencies, do you know how else victims were transported from the scene? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled, he may answer. It's not hearsay. Uh, numerous patients were transported up by law enforcement, uh, bystanders in the parade, and family members. On cross-examination, in reference to this being a motor vehicle versus pedestrian incident, uh, you were asked whether you'd ever responded to a call like that before, and you said, yes, sir. Do you remember that testimony? Yes. So I'd ask a clarifying question. Have you ever been involved in or directed a response to a motor vehicle versus pedestrian incident of this magnitude before in your career? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. I have not. That's all I have. Thank you. All right. Thank you. You may step down. Your Honor, may I? 
clarify. Uh, I don't believe this witness is on the defendant's witness list. I'd ask that he be excused from his subpoena. He may. Thank you. Your next witness. Say we call Nicole White. All right. Good afternoon, Ms. White. If you would please make your way to the witness stand. It is on my right, all the way to the back or front of the courtroom as the case may be. And if you would, when you get there, come up a riser, raise your right hand, and my clerk, Teresa, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing? First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each. Nicole White, N-I-C-O-L-E-W-H-I-T-E. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Ma'am, I'm going to direct your attention to November 21st of last year. Were you at the City of Waukesha Parade? I was. And were you a participant or were you a spectator? Um, I was walking with um, the REMAX group. Okay. So did REMAX have a float in the parade? Uh, yeah, there was a like a van. Okay. Was Is there anything unusual about the, the van? Um, it had like a fire projector off the back of the top of the van with like a basket. How did it, how did it come about that you w were walking with the REMAX group? Um, my friend's mom was with the REMAX group and had asked us to join and walk with them. Approximately how many people were walking with you that day? Um, I would have to guess and say maybe like 12. Okay. Were a lot of those people you had known from, from your friends, um, your relationship with your friend? Yeah, probably about half of them. And what was the general, do you remember the weather that day? It was in November, I'm assuming cold? Yeah, it was gray, I mean, sweatshirt and jeans weather. Had you walked in the parade before? No, ma'am. Okay. Had you ever been a spectator of the City of Waukesha Parade? No. Okay. So I'm going to show you a clip, and it's um, pre, kind of at the beginning of the parade. It's Exhibit 142. I'm going to have it displayed on the screen in front of you. And I'm just going to ask you, and we'll play a couple seconds of that if it's okay. And just let me know when it's displayed on your screen. Is it before you now? Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to play it for a couple seconds. Okay. Okay. Do you recognize that video clip? Um, I've never seen this before, no. Okay. Does that uh, show, though, however, the, the van that was in front of you that you were marching with on the parade on November 21st of last year? Yes. Let me play a couple more seconds and let me, you can tell me if you see yourself um, behind the, the van, all right? Yeah. Okay. Does this accurately reflect what you recall of this section of the parade, which it looks like it's at the beginning of the parade in terms of who you were with and what the float looked like? Yes. Okay. Um, I'd ask that the court um, admit this into evidence and display it, publish it to the jury. Objection. Witness just stated she doesn't recall the clip. The witness has uh, answered question, questions that establish the foundation for this. And uh, based on that, the court is going to receive Exhibit 142, and permission to publish is granted. So wait one moment. I'm just going to have it played through so the jury can see it, okay? Okay, if you can play.
Can you pause it for a moment? Do you, do you see yourself in this, uh, this section that's been paused? Yes. There's a touch screen. The, the screen in front of you actually will react to your finger. Can you circle where you are in this frame? Okay. And if we can clear that off, I just wanted to let the jury know kind of who they were looking at. Um, if we can play it the rest of the way, it was paused at 21 seconds. Um, it's a total clip of 33 seconds. Did you have a formation or exactly what was the purpose of the people walking behind the van? Um, <clears throat> there were other people that were passing out candy along the way at certain points. Um, I was mainly just taking pictures okay. as we went. Okay. And was that part of your kind of your duty is to kind of take pictures of the whole environment, what was around you and kind of your perspective from walking in the parade? Uh, yeah, part of um, my friend, one of my friends um, from the group, her younger son was in the basket of the Remax van, so I was taking pictures of him and, and the other younger boy. Did there come a time when you, in the parade route, that you started hearing something unusual going on behind you? No, ma'am. Did you ever hear um, anything that caused you to look back? No. So what do you remember about, at some point, were you struck? Yeah, that, that's the first point that I knew that anything was happening was when I was hit. There wasn't any uh, commotion or noise until right at that moment. Okay. So can you tell the jury what you recall of that moment, if you will? <laughs> um, I just remember being um, struck by the vehicle from behind, like on my like my back, and then I like I fell to my knees and kind of like rolled under uh, the vehicle. And like when after it it happened, um, I guess like I I didn't really know like I I thought that like somebody would have stopped after that point, and when I looked up um i just remember the vehicle like continued do you recall anything about the vehicle like a vehicle description what color it was um it was like a, a red suv okay. and when you said that the vehicle you thought it would have stopped did you see the vehicle stop no did you see any brake lights on the vehicle not that i can recall um the objection is noted, it's overruled. Will you restate your answer, please? No. Okay. And I should have maybe clarified, did you see any brake lights activated after when you looked up from being hit? No. Now, where were you in relationship to the float when the car struck you? Were you immediately behind the float, do you recall? I was probably a, like, a couple of yards back from the float, but I was behind the Remax van, yes. So would it be fair to say that you were more in the middle of the road versus on the left or the right side of the road? Yes. And when you looked up after being struck, did you see the path that the car took, or the SUV? Um, it veered to the left side of the van that was in front of me. And then did you see where it went after that? Um, it just continued, but I couldn't, like the van well, I couldn't see anything beyond that, no. As you saw the car after it struck you, so what you're saying, I just wanna make sure I, I've got this right, is prior to the vehicle striking you, you never looked back before it struck you? Correct. So you didn't know what hit you at the time that you were struck? Correct. And when it went past you, how fast was it going? And I, I'm not really talking about how many miles per hour, but was it at a slow speed, a medium speed? How would you describe it for the jury? Hearsay. Overruled. Go ahead and answer. 
Um, I mean, I, I would guess probably like maybe like 20 miles an hour. And I'm assuming that you drive a car daily. Yes, ma'am. And you've been driving for 10 years, more than 10 years? M more than 10 okay. years, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, did you ever hear a horn coming from the car uh, prior to you being struck? No. Did you hear a horn coming from the car, a horn noise coming from the car after you were struck? No. I'm going to show you what's been marked as States Exhibit 15. I'll again be on the screen. And it's, would you generally characterize this, um, and it can be displayed, it's already been um, admitted into evidence. Yes, permission to publish. Thank you. Yes, granted. Um, generally speaking, do you recognize this as a plate prayed route? If you look in the upper right part of the screen, there's like a, a purple line that kind of goes down White Rock Avenue, takes a right, and it goes down Main Street. Does that look familiar? Yes. And that would be the route of the parade that day? Yes. And direct your attention to approximately um, shortly after Main and Barstow. There's a um, star, a yellow star, and then if you connect that line to the yellow star, um, it says your name and Remax services. Do you see that? Yes. Would, um, would it help if we zoomed in, or you can see it from there? I can, I can see it. Okay. Um, why don't we zoom in a little bit so maybe the jury can see it? I, I don't know how familiar you are with Waukesha, but the roads are kind of a little crazy. And would that accurately reflect where you were struck? Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you. After you were struck, what did you observe of the of the parade route? Um, I mean, it it was very chaotic. Um, there was people at that point that began like running and screaming to either help others or or flee from the area. Um, there was like a, a group that like came to me and, and like helped me over to like the side of the road. Were you able to walk? No, I my knee was injured. So, what did you do once, or what happened after you got to the side of the road? Um, initially, the um, the people that came to me helped me uh, sit in a chair on the side of the road, and then. Um, um, eventually, um, moments later, they moved us into the the building that was right there, which was the Smart Asset Real, Realty. And that's also in the area, I think it's reflected on Exhibit 15, that would be in the area of where you were struck? That's correct. Okay. What did you do once you got into the Smart Asset Realty building? Um, I... I mean, there was several, several other people that were in there as well. Um, and we, like I sat there and waited. There was a nurse or someone that had like some medical experience that kind of like looked at me. And then I waited until um, later on when I was, um, there was a police officer that came back and, um, escorted me to the hospital. So the police officer transported you to the hospital? Correct. Was that Waukesha Memorial Hospital? Correct. Okay. I'm going to show you what's been marked as Exhibit 20. And I'm going to ask you, it'll just be in front of you initially, I'm going to show you a couple seconds of that and ask you if that's, um, if you recognize um, what's contained in that video. It is a three-second video, so I'll actually show the whole thing to you before we ask that it be admitted and published. Um, so why don't you take a moment to view that. Is it on the screen in front of you? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Did you recognize that video? No, I had not seen that before. Do you recognize, though, what took place in that video? Yes. Can you describe to the jury what you just saw? Objection, hearsay. Um, overruled. Grounds. Not 
accuracy? Um, it was it was a video of the the events that took place that day where I was struck by the vehicle. I would ask the court to uh, um, admit this exhibit into evidence and also to allow the state to publish it. It'd be exhibit 20. Mr. Brooks, anything? Objection. Uh, the objection is noted, it's overruled. Exhibit 20 is received, permission to publish is granted. Now before we start the video, um, do you recognize the white van that's depicted I'd say in the upper third of the screen. Yeah, that is the Remax fan. And you see approximately where you are on um, this frame? Yes. And can you, I don't know if you can do it with the video, but if you can just circle it or circle you. Okay. Well, the top of. Yeah. <laughs> can we clear that? Um, I, I think you circled a couple people. Um, there's one, and I think before you, you um, circled yourself, you're wearing a red sweatshirt right there. Okay, thank you. If you can clear the screen. And let's take a look at the video. Thank you. Objection, we just looked at your video. Oh. And did that accurately depict the car hitting you from behind and then rolling over your legs? Yes. What injuries did you suffer as a result of this? Um, Generally speaking. Uh, two torn ligaments in my right knee and then to my spine, like my lower spine. Two vertebrae were like compressed and then my tailbone. And those were all the results of being struck? Oh, correct. Thank you. Nothing further, thank you. Any cross, Mr. Brooks? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, you stated that um, when you were struck from behind, you didn't um, you didn't hear uh, or see the vehicle approach. Is that correct? That's correct. And you estimated this. Did you estimate the speed, or do you do you recall how fast the vehicle may have been going? When it hit me, no, I was not able to see that. When it when it passed you, they had asked me when it when it passed me afterwards what I would estimate it to have been, and I said if I had to guess, it was probably around twenty miles an hour. Afterwards, <clears throat> would it be fair to say from the vi uh, the videos that we just saw? that the vehicle wasn't traveling fast? Your Honor, I'm just going to, for the record, Grounds. just clarify that the video is showing at 50% speed. Grounds, what? Um, I didn't know that initially, I guess. <laughs> Nobody knew that. Can you play it at full speed then, please? And then he can ask the question. Certainly. You said that you would estimate the vehicle was going around 20 miles per hour? Correct. And how would you come to that estimation? I, I guess I'm not sure how you want me to answer that question. And, What's the basis and for you saying 20 miles per hour? Based on previous experience with vehicles, traffic. So would it be, so would it be fair to say you, you don't know for sure how fast the vehicle was traveling? There's no way for me to say for sure how fast the vehicle was going. I was not driving it. You stated that you fell to the ground. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Did you 
at any point get a description of the driver of the vehicle? No. Were you able to make out if anyone was in the vehicle besides the driver? No. Did you get a license plate number? No. Did you file a claim in this matter? There was a police report filed, yes. Do you remember the uh, name of the officer that you filed the report with? No, I do not. It was an FBI agent. Do you recall the date that you were interviewed or that you made the report? November 21st. Would that be with the FBI agent, as you just stated, or with local law enforcement? The FBI. I know it's kind of far, but can you see this paper that I'm holding? Yeah. Is that your handwriting? If you can't see it that close, just say you can't. I can't read it. Do we have the document camera we can put up? It takes about two minutes to, to project it. Verify. This will just be previewed for the witness. It does have personal identifying information on it. Okay. I will somewhat object to that, Your Honor. This, this is a public trial. We have to remember that. Your objection is noted. Upside down, okay. Can you move it up a little bit? Well, uh, can you see that? It's not in front of her yet. Oh, so I'm sorry. We just wanted to make sure we could get it working. I'm sorry. It should be there momentarily. I apologize. You wouldn't have known. There you go. It's up. Okay, you're Is that your handwriting on this uh, document? Yes. 
and you stated that you gave uh, a report to the FBI on November the 21st. Is that correct? <laughs> that is correct. Is it correct that this date here says 1229 of 21? That's not what this form is. What would this form be? Um, that was a form that was filled out as a follow-up based on my experience at the parade. I don't, I spoke with someone in person on the 21st. Do you know who provided you with this form that we're looking at? Um, it was, I believe it was through the victim's witness program. I, I don't recall correct, no. It was emailed to me, I believe. So would it be fair to say then that the report you filed was with uh, Officer Wagner? You talking about this report or previously? The uh, report of the of being struck. On the 21st of November? On the 21st of November. Do you know the name of the individual you spoke with on the 21st? Not offhand, no. Do you recall um, do you recall stating in the report that you filed on November 21st that you saw a red SUV go to the left of the float and then to the right in front? Um, I don't believe. That's what I recall is what I had stated earlier was that I saw veer to the left of the float. From there, I wouldn't have been able to see. Would it be fair to say that reading from the report that you gave on November the 21st, <coughs> that it says that you saw a red SUV go to the left of the float and then to the right in front. I don't have the report, so. Would you like to see it? I have right here. Mr. Brooks, do you want to show her the report? Then you need to put it on the document camera. Review it again. <coughs> oh, Your Honor, that is not the report. I believe that that may have been notes that were with the report that went to Mr. Brooks. That is not the report. Looks to be a summary of what she may have provided to another officer FBI agent but not the report itself so in light of that um, she's not going to be questioned on that unless that for, unless that helps refresh her recollection does it look at it it's in front of you right yeah does that in any way help refresh your recollection about what you may have told uh, the uh, an investigator in this case I on believe, the 21st sorry yeah I believe what I this was a year ago, but I believe what I said was that I witnessed it continue to drive, veer to the left to avoid the van that was in front of me, and then continue driving without stopping. And just so the record is clear, because it was being used, I think, to refresh her recollection after she reviewed it, I turned off the camera. So it's not in front of her at the moment. Would it? It's being given back to you. Go ahead, ask your next question. I have the actual report too, if that may help. Mm -hmm. 
you would it be fair to say that you testified that you don't recall hearing anything or seeing anything before you were struck, correct? Correct. And now this is reading from the report, page one. I guess the proper foundation for Mr. Brooks to use would be if reviewing a report would refresh her recollection and then based upon her answer, he would go from there. Well, you could also just directly ask the question since it's on cross-exam. Um, is it true that you said X to the investigator? But you need to quote directly then from the I, I report. Tend to, go ahead, ask your question. Quote right from here. Is it true that you said when you were walking, well, it says White explained when she was walking, she heard screaming, and as she looked around, she was hit by the red SUV. Does that ref refresh or help you recall anything that happened on November 21st? No. Do you recall saying that? I do not recall those exact words, no. Do you recall saying that? When well, this is all it's explaining, like in the third person, I'm assuming, it says White. As she lay on the ground, White stated she observed the red SUV go to the left of the float and then to the right in front of the float. Again. Hold on, she may answer. Go ahead. As I previously stated, I observed the van go towards the left, the vehicle go towards the left of the van, at which point there was no, there was no indication that it was stopping or anything and that it continued from there. I could not see what happened beyond it going to the left of the van because the van was in front of me blocking my view. It also says White stated the vehicle appeared to be traveling extremely fast and it did not slow down or even brake. But you just said that you couldn't see the vehicle once it veered around the van. Is that fair to say? As it veered to the left of the van, it did appear to be moving fast, yes. Would it be fair to say that the video footage doesn't show that? that mischaracterizes the video footage as Browns. the video was um, cut off um, shortly after striking Miss White. You're making an argument, which is something you can do later, so I'll sustain the objection as to the form of the question. It goes on to say, White did not observe the driver of the SUV and could only describe the SUV as red and it appeared to be a lower rise in quotation marks SUV and maybe a traverse. Do you recall saying that? I said it was a similar size to a traverse. Um, what is a traverse? Traverses are relevant. Well, grounds. Overruled, she may, she may answer and explain why she said what she did. Because, in my opinion, it's a lower sitting SUV or vehicle versus like some of the higher, some of them sit up higher and are bigger in size. It was more of a mid-size, lower to the ground SUV, in my opinion, similar to a Traverse. Do you recall saying that, and I'm reading from the report again, White stated that she was treated and released at Waukesha Memorial Hospital and sustained bruising, scars, and road rash on her body and a knee injury to her right leg. White stated that she did not have a broken leg, but may have a torn MCL. Do you recall reporting that? Yes. 
So would it be fair to say, and I'm asking this because you said may have a torn MCL, would it be fair to say that at that time you were not sure of the full extent of your injury? Yes. About, about how long were you treated at Waukesha Memorial Hospital? Um, a few hours. Did you file a claim in this matter? Any any type of claim? Yes. Um, what was that claim? There were claims that um, were filed with the state of Wisconsin that were to cover like the cost of the medical treatment that was received. So the state of Wisconsin offered to pay your medical expenses? It was through the Victim Witness Protection Program. So would you consider yourself a party to this matter then? Objection. Grounds? Sust <coughs> Sustained, not relevant. <coughs> Excuse me. In the claim that you filed, did you file a claim under a, uh, under an injured party? Objection. I, I guess I'm, I'm not understanding the um, question. It's vague. Grounds. She indicated she was filed a claim because she was injured. So, Mr. Mr. Brooks, I'm sustaining the objection as to the form of the question. Please rephrase. Do you consider yourself a, a, a injured party? Yes. Are you a plaintiff in this yes. matter? Grounds? Oh, she's a witness. Sustained. Have you read or seen the complaint in this matter in any, at any time? Objection is irrelevant. Grounds? Overruled. She may answer. I'm sorry, what was the question? Have you, have you seen or read the complaint? No, I, I don't know what complaint is being referred to, no. And were you aware that you may be called to testify in this matter? Yes. And who are you informed by? The victim witness program and the prosecutors. So are you saying the state of Wisconsin? Relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Mr. Brooks on our item 611, please move on to another line of questioning. At the moment that you were struck, did you observe anyone else struck at that time? No. So it'd be fair to say that you were, to, to your knowledge, at that time, you were the only one that you knew that was struck? Uh, yes, to my knowledge. At would that it time. Be, would it be fair to say that there were numerous people in, this, in the general area that you were at that time? Uh, yes. At that time, did you learn about anybody that was struck at, at the point 
in time that you were struck? At the time that I was hit, no. And you stated that you didn't see any uh, brake lights? Correct. You were able to see that from the ground position? Correct. From your opinion, did it appear to you that the vehicle was attempting to strike anyone? Objection, calls for speculation. Grounds. The way he asked uh, from, the way he asked it, did it appear? If you know, you may answer. It appeared it was traveling in the direction where it could have struck other people, yes. But to the best of your knowledge, you, you didn't know for sure. That's correct. No further questions. Can you read your rack? Just briefly. Ma'am, after receiving medical attention at Waukesha Memorial Hospital, did you receive any other medical attention following November 21st, 2021? Objection, yes. irrelevant. Overruled. She may answer. And direct your attention back to the video. It was Exhibit 20, the one that was the overhead video. Do you recall what, seeing that video today? Objection. She never answered the first question. She said yes. I didn't, I'm sorry. I apologize. I didn't, I didn't hear it. It was a little quiet, but I heard it. Okay. Do you recall seeing Exhibit 20, which was an overhead video mm -hmm. of you being struck? Today, yes. yes. And was that the same red SUV depicted in that video as what you saw after you were struck? Yes. Thank you. Nothing further. All right. Thank you, ma'am. You may step down. She may. You may call your next witness. The state calls Sarah Waymeyer Aparicio. Madam Clerk, could we also work on getting the uh, rear table switched to the input? Sorry. Thank you. I'm sorry, what was her name again? Sarah Waymeyer Aparicio. Thank you. Good afternoon, Ms. Waymeyer Aparicio. If you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is up a riser to my right. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand, and my clerk, Teresa, will swear you in. She's right over here. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you, ma'am. Please have a seat. First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names and spell each for the record. All right, my first name is Sarah, S-A-R-A-H. My last names are Waymeyer, W-E-H-M-E-I-E-R, and Aparicio, A-P-A-R-I-C-I-O. Thank you, go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Uh, Ma'am, can you tell us where you work? I work for the school district of Waukesha. What was your job title during the 2021 2022 academic year. I was the director of bands at Waukesha South High School. 
What kind of things do you do as the band director itself? Um, organize all sorts of events, whether it's concerts or marching band, performing in parades. How long did you hold that position? I held the position on and off over the years for 10 years. As the band director at Waukesha South, how frequently did you interact with the kids who were members of the band? On a daily basis. Okay. And did you know the name of all the kids that were in your marching band during that school year? Oh, absolutely, yes. Did the band march in the 2021 Waukesha Christmas Parade? Yes, we did. Were you there with them? Yes, I was. Had you done that in the past? Yes, I had. About um, how every, many times? Every year that I was there, we did that parade as well as Memorial Day. Would you describe it as an event that the kids look forward to? Absolutely. When the band marches, uh, are they in formation? They are. What about uniforms? Do they have any? We do have uniforms, yes. Okay. Uh, when you march in formation, is this something that you practice with the band? We do. We practice um, with the students that are in the marching band portion of the parade. We had also done another parade in the Dells that year, so we had practiced with that. For the students that are not in marching band, we had practiced during class time for several, several weeks leading up to it. How does the formation of the marching band get set up? So we practice during class and then we kind of have the general structure of what it will look like and then student leaders within the section place the students in their places the day of the parade. So they have a little leeway but you don't want bass drums marching next to clarinets? Correct, exactly. So we say these two rows will be flutes so senior leaders help decide which flutes are in those located or those specified places. I'm going to ask that we project Exhibit 21 onto the screen for the witness and the defendant. Permission granted. Just let me know when you see a picture in front okay. of you. Okay. It is here, yep. Okay, what are we looking at with Exhibit 21? Can you tell us what this is? Uh, so this is an aerial view of our marching band. Um, you can see the names of the students that are identified. Those were all students that were physically impacted by the car that day. November 21st of 2021? Correct. The Waukesha Christmas Parade? Correct. Have you reviewed this uh, photograph and the information contained in it before your testimony today? Yes, I have. Does it accurately represent uh, the formation of the kids in your band on that day? It does, yes. I move exhibit uh, 21 into evidence and ask to publish. Any position? the object. Exhibit 21 has received permission to publish as granted. And can we zoom in on that a little bit? There we go. Can you walk us through uh, from left to right just identifying, I know that we can all read, but just for the record, can you read those names for us and then also tell us what instrument each of those kids is playing? All right, so first we have Aiden Lofgren on bass drum. Connor Tank on crash cymbals, Justin Galaxon on sousaphone, Eric Teeks trombone, Tyler Pudliner on tenor sax, um, still on the exterior, Harry Gothoy on trumpet, then Eleanor Anders on mellophone, Theo Mazza on trumpet, Marit Gilchrist on alto sax, and Sasha Catalan on clarinet. What's a mellophone? A mellophone is a marching version of a French horn. What about a sousaphone? A marching version of a tuba. Have you ever seen the Ohio State Marching Band perform? I have, yes. I'll withdraw the question. <laughs> so, the Badgers. Um, there are 10 members of your band identified in this photograph, is that right? That is correct. Okay. Could we please uh, project for the witness only uh, Exhibit 15? Do you see something on your screen in front of you? There's a map on the screen. Are you familiar with downtown Waukesha? I am, yes. Okay. Do you recognize what we're looking at in this map? I do, yes. Um, Exhibit 15 was previously received and published. I'd ask to publish again. Permission granted. Can we zoom in, um, Ms. Gussie, on the intersection? There we go. Yep. 
All right. Do you see a, uh, a yellow star between uh, Barstow and Gasper Streets on Main Street? Yes. And do you see the line connecting that yellow star to uh, a box with some green background and, and some names? I do. Under the banner of Waukesha South Band? Correct, yes. Take a, a moment, take as much time as you need, read through those names in that list. Let me know when you're done. Okay. Are the names on that list um, identical to the names that you previously told us about in Exhibit 21, that photograph of the aerial view? Yes. Overruled. She may answer. I believe she did answer, and her answer may stand. Did the jury all hear that? All right, thank you. Can you tell us uh, what happened while your band was marching between Barstow and approaching Gasper Street on Main Street on November 21st of 2021? So I was towards the front of the band. That tends to be where I typically am because um, if you can imagine a typical parade, there's a lot of stopping and starting as the band is going through the streets. And so I am in connection with our drum majors. Those are the student leaders who have the whistles that give the students the command when they should be forward marching and when we should be marching in place. So I'm helping look ahead to see what's coming down the road while the students are busy playing their instruments. Um, the streets had just narrowed as we got into that point and everyone was, there was a lot of enthusiasm in the crowd and the, the student, I could feel the energy from the students. And all of a sudden I heard something going on, so I, I turned around and at first I thought there was an emergency vehicle or something. I could tell there was some sort of a vehicle trying to get through. And then I started just seeing things flying in the air and I realized this was not a vehicle waiting for people to move out of the way. I realized this vehicle was running over people. Um, the students around me, we all kind of dispersed at the same time. I thought in the initial moments that it was an accident. But then as I turned and the car went immediately past me and I could see that the driver was staring straight ahead and knew that, you know, could, could have clearly seen that they were running over people. What happened next? Um, my first impact was to run after the car for a moment. And then I realized, cause I watched them run over the people in front of me as well. And then I turned around and I saw my students all laying on the street and screaming. A police officer immediately, it felt like at the time, immediately came running, shots fired. And so my students who weren't injured were all dispersed and I was trying to at the same time watch over my students on the street, but keep an eye on where the other students who were going so that I could make sure they were all safe as well. But I stayed in the streets so that we didn't know where the shots fired were coming from, so I wanted to make sure that those students in the street were safe as well. And just to clarify, you mentioned that you heard from a police officer that shots had been fired? Correct. You yourself, with the trained ear of a band director, didn't hear any gunshots? I did not hear gunshots, no. Okay. I'm going to ask that we uh, project on the screen for the witness only, exhibit number 24, please. Permitting granted. And can we make sure we're playing this at normal speed? <coughs> and we're going to turn the volume off while we identify. So we'll leave it off there. I'm just going to play a few seconds without any volume. Um, and then I'll stop and I'll ask you a question, okay? Okay. Okay, we've stopped at about five seconds into the video. Do you recognize this video? Uh, yes, that is our band performing. And uh, I'm not sure how familiar you are with downtown, but do you know the businesses that your band is in front of right now? Um, we're by Davino Gelato and Martha Merrill's. Okay. And then and the Allo Chocolat and everything is on the other side as well as an apartment building. Okay. Um, have you reviewed this video before your testimony today? Uh, yes, I have. Does it accurately depict what happened to your band the yes, afternoon of the parade? We move exhibit 24 into evidence and ask to publish. Any position, Mr. Brooks? Objection. Um, if the witness has seen this video before, how, how would that corroborate with the testimony? Your objection is noted. It's overruled. 
Exhibit 24 is received, permission to publish is granted. We are going to play this uh, entirely through. It's 30 seconds long. We're going to play it once with the audio at normal speed. Go ahead. again and set the speed to 50 percent. And turn the audio off. And we're going to play to a certain point and then I'll say pause and then I'll ask you some questions when we pause, okay? Objection, what is the relevancy of playing it at slower speed? Your objection is noted. It's overruled. Permission granted. Go ahead and play. Pause. We've paused at 11 seconds. From viewing the video up to this 11 second point, can you tell us who in your band was struck by that SUV so far? So far that would have been Aiden, Connor, Justin, Eric, and Tyler, I believe at that point, perhaps also Harry. And let's resume at the 11 second mark, please. We've paused at 16 seconds. Would it be fair to say that the remaining um, students we've been talking about today were struck after that point? Correct. And now we've reached a point where the SUV is completely past all of your band members? Correct. I'm going to ask that we project for the witness only exhibit number 23. We're just going to play a few uh, seconds at normal speed here without any audio. Pause. We're five seconds in. Do you recognize this video? Yes, I do. Did you see yourself in the video? I did. Uh, does, this, it, does this video depict the same marching band in the same area of Main Street on November 21st? It does. Uh, I move exhibit 23 into evidence and ask to publish. Any position, Mr. Brooks? Objection. Your objection is noted. It's overruled. Exhibit 23 is received. Permission to publish is granted. We'll play this once through at normal speed with audio, please. tail end of that video we saw a red SUV. Is that the SUV you've been talking about during your testimony? That is, yes. Okay. And can we go back to the beginning of that video? We'll turn the audio off. And we'll just play a few seconds here from the beginning. Pause. We are two seconds in. Do you see yourself on the screen? I do. 
So that's a touch screen in front of you. Would you mind drawing a circle around yourself? Okay. All right. So you are um, directly above the black shirt band banner. Correct. All right. And then we can clear that. All right. We did it already. Thank you. I'd ask that we put up for the witness only exhibit number 22, please. seconds without any audio for the witness only. Pause. Uh, and we've stopped at seven seconds. Do you recognize that video? I do. What does this video show? Uh, this video also shows um, that the car coming through as well and the different angle in terms of some of the students dispersing as well, some of them getting struck by the car. Is this video also an accurate representation of what happened that day? Yes, it is. Move Exhibit 22 into evidence and ask to publish. Is Rex in position? Objection. Your objection is noted. It's overruled. Exhibit 22 is received. Permission to publish is granted. We're going to play this uh, in its entirety. It's 32 seconds long with the audio. Did you see yourself in that video? I did. Let's go back to the beginning, please, and set it to play at 50% speed. And we'll turn the audio off this time. And we'll play from the beginning. pause. We've paused at nine seconds. Uh, can you use the screen in front of you and circle yourself if you see yourself? Can we clear that please? And we'll resume at the nine second mark. at 21 seconds. You testified earlier that you initially ran towards the vehicle as it was driving away, is that right? Correct. Do we see you do that in this portion of the video? Yes. If you see yourself, can you circle yourself on the screen? So you're in the bottom right hand corner. Is that a yes? Yes. Sorry. Yes. Thank you. We can take that down. Did you see that red SUV stop at any point? No. As you were in real time remembering the events of that day, do you recall seeing any of your students getting hit? I did not see any of my students get hit, only of the group in front of me. I, just, I just saw, like I said, things fly because they were in the formation that came through the middle. In the immediate aftermath, after the vehicle had gone through and after you had run after it briefly, mm -hmm. did you have any personal interaction with any of your students who had been hit? I did. Um, there were several on the ground, um, and they were surrounded by other bystanders who stepped in. So I just basically was circulating on the ground between the students who were injured, and then the students had run away to several shops in the area. And so I was just 
it probably was an hour, it felt like. I don't really know how much time it was exactly, but rotating between the students who were injured as we were waiting for first responders, as well as checking on the students and trying to at least keep the kids who were not injured in a space where we knew where we, they were so we could safely get them home once all of our injured students had been picked up by first responders. Do you know whether any of those students that you had personal interaction with had to be transported to the hospital? Uh, there were several students that had to be taken to the hospital. Do you know in general uh, the nature of some of those injuries? There was um, many broken bones, a lot of, in, there was internal bleeding, um, dental work that needed to be done, lots of stitches, cuts, abrasions, sprains, torn ligaments. Did you remain in your capacity as the Waukesha South um, marching band director for the remainder of that academic year? I did. You eventually went back to school after that Sunday, the 21st, is that right? That is correct. So um, we, we gathered, we went back to school um, once we were assured that we had as many students that were still left in the area back to get them on the bus back to school. You're talking about that night, Sunday, That the evening, 21st. yes, okay. yes. And in the days that followed, kids yes. came back to school. They did, yes. And you had personal interaction with the members of your marching band? Yes, I did. We have objections now that it's overruled. Can we please put Exhibit 21 back up on the screen? And this has previously been admitted. It's the diagram. I'd ask that we put it up for the jury as well. Go ahead. Based on your own observations that day, your interaction with the students in the immediate aftermath, and your review of the video evidence here today in court, how many of those 10 members of your marching band were either struck or run over by the red SUV? They all were. Can you tell us whether or not you got a good look at the driver that day? I did from the profile. Approximately how many feet would you estimate you were from the driver at its closest? Probably two feet. You were still in the street at that point? Correct. And the SUV was too? Yes. We saw in the video what the lighting conditions were, but could you describe from your own memory what the lighting was like that day? It, Overruled, you may answer. Um, the lights were beginning, the sun was beginning to set, however we were in an area where we were by lots of stores, so the sun was still out as well as the light coming from all the storefronts. Can we project on the screen for the witness only, exhibit number 120. Do you see a, an image on the screen in front of you? Yes, I do. Is that image an accurate representation of what the driver of the SUV looked like that day when you saw him? Completely, yes. I'd move exhibit 120 into evidence and ask to publish. 120 is received. Permission to publish is granted. It may have been received earlier. Yeah, it's already been received. I believe you testified a little bit earlier about the driver's demeanor as you observed him. Could you go into more detail about that? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. She may answer. So originally my perception just had been that I assumed there was an accident because I could not imagine anything else. But when the car went past me, I, my perception changed of what was happening completely because the driver was looking straight ahead, making looked very attentive at that point, so the driver clearly was aware that he had hit and run over all of these people. It was not something that could have happened without the driver's awareness. We were also coming up on an intersection of a cross street, and although there was a crowd on the side, again, this is just my perception, but if the driver had been trying to escape the parade route so they were no longer hitting people, I felt like an instinct would have caused the head to turn to see if there was a way out on that side street but the driver's head never turned looking for a way out of the parade route at that moment. 
And that's what caused my perception of what was going on that day to change. When you say side street, you're referring to the street that runs in front of the uh, Martha Merrill bookstore? Correct. Correct. Gasper Street. Gasper Street. And again, just to clarify, when we look at exhibit number 120 here, uh, the person in white, is that a member of your band? Yes, that is. That is one of the student conductors. And then the person in the foreground on the right with a blurry face, is that another? I don't know if you know who it is, but can you tell us if that's a member of your band? That is a member of our band, yes. Okay. That's all the questions I have for this witness. Thank you. All right. The court's going to take a break before we do cross-exam. About uh, take our afternoon break for about 15 minutes. All rise for the jury, please. Thank you. We're in, we are in recess. You can step down if you'd like.
having my break this time, so I don't know where I'm at. It's about. It's about. We'll see. Tracy, I want to update my witness, my witness, my um, exhibit. Yeah, that, I've been keeping them going, so I just turned into whatever's easiest to do. Otherwise, you can just make some notations. You can come on back up. All right, we are back on the record. Appearances are as they were before. We'll bring the jury out for cross. Go ahead. the subject matter jurisdiction, please. No, not right now. Is that a judicial determination, Your Honor?
Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Mr. Brooks, do you have any questions for this witness? Go ahead. On the night of evening of November 21st, 2021, do you recall uh, what officer uh, conducted your interview? I do not recall. Can you recall if it was a detective or uh, just a regular officer? I do not recall. You mentioned earlier in testimony that um, that there was a side street where there could have been an exit out of the parade route Correct. provided. Is that fair to say? That is fair to say, yes. Do you recall if that uh, side street was barricaded in any way? I do not recall. Do you recall if there was a, a another side street on the opposite side of the street? The other side of the street has a plaza, so there's an open space, but it's not a traffic uh, for car traffic street. Do you recall what that street would be used for if not for traffic? It's an open space where people who have been on the shops on Main Street can go down to the river walk. Um, do you know if cars can park there? They may not. So it's basically like just a, a, a walkway? Correct. Um, from what you recall, can you estimate the speed of the vehicle that you saw that day? I'm not good at estimating speeds, but it felt fast as it went past me. It felt like it was accelerating. And you stated you was re relatively close to the vehicle when it passed you? Yes, I was. Uh, were you injured in any way? I was not. Fortunately, I had moved just in time. Do you recall if anybody that may have been directly next to you was injured in any way? They were not. So would it be fair to say that um, everyone in your immediate area was not struck? Depends on how you want to define immediate, but the first three, uh, four rows of the band, no one was struck because at that point everyone had run away. I was referring to, I guess I wasn't clear enough on immediate. I was referring to directly next to you. Directly next to me, no. Were you able to get a license plate number of the vehicle? I was not. Did you notice any um, tinted windows to the vehicle? It's 11 months ago, but I believe there were in the back, but I don't want to say yes or no for sure on that. Did you see anyone else in the vehicle? I did not. Could you see the back seats of the vehicle? I did not look at the back seats. Could you see the passenger seat of the vehicle? I could. Do you call anyone being in the passenger seat? I did not see anyone in the passenger seat. Did you initially hear any sounds before um, you realized that something was wrong? Um, I was, the band had just started playing and so I was concentrating and listening to the sounds of the band and then all of a sudden it was just the sound of chaos as 
the car came through the band. So it, it would be fair to say that it was pretty loud. Where I was at that moment, yes, because I was directly in the middle of the band. Would you say extremely loud or moderately loud? I would say moderately loud, and as the band director, my job was listening to the sound of the band, and so I could give the students feedback when we got back to school. So that's where my focus was. From your estimation, do you think it would have, uh, the sounds from the band and um, the people and um, just the parade itself, would that at any time um, impaired you from hearing everything that was going on? Everything, likely, but for example, like it would have still been, it wasn't so loud, I would have heard a car horn that I would have been able to hear. I wasn't referring to that. Okay, I was just asking, because you were asking volumes, and so I couldn't have heard everything, I couldn't have heard something soft, but something that loud as an example. So, just to be clear, From your opinion, you think you would have been able to hear a horn? I believe I would have. Even at the same time listening for the band notes, as you say, you have to give them feedback when you got back to school? Because that would have been an unexpected sound, so that would have been something that would have stood out in my memory. It would have been something that draws your attention. Exactly. So in your opinion, do you estimate it would have been hard, hard to hear any screaming or anything of that nature? Um, we started, as soon as the screaming started, we did hear that immediately. Because as soon as the screaming started, the students stopped playing, and so that, that one, loudness... One second. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Do you recall how long you had been uh, actively participating in the parade at the time of the incident? Um, that had been my first year back as the director of band for a while, but I marched in that parade in high school myself, So, I, and I've attended on the years that I was not teaching, so it's probably my 40th time plus at that parade. I, I think you probably misunderstood. Okay. Like how, well, that's, that's still, I don't have to ask that question. <laughs> Um, I was referring to how long you had been marching at, oh, that, at that time. At, yeah, at that point in. Probably blocks all changed size pretty quickly in Waukesha, but we had been going for about four blocks. We were about at the halfway point of the parade route. Did you notice anything amiss up until that point? Up until that point, no. <laughs> um, Did you hear any law enforcement radios that may have alerted you to no. something being wrong? No. So it'd be fair to say as far as you know, everything was pretty much standard? Up until the moment, yes. You stated uh, in your report that you were walking backwards facing the students? No, I was walking forward because the students near me were walking backwards. So I was the eyes in front for the students who were marching backwards. So is it possible the, the, the report could have misquoted what you said? I have not seen the report. Um, the report that I have would be uh, page two. I don't have that in front of me. Would you like to see it? Sure.
Uh, so I see it's not in, there we go. So it was, I was facing forward and then as soon as I heard sounds, I turned around and started facing backwards at that time to see what was happening. So my direction of movement until the incident started was forward. And then once I heard unexpected sounds coming from the back of the band, then I turned around. Do you recall uh, the statement that's in the report though? She stated that she was walking backwards facing the students. Do you I, recall I, that? I do not. Um, I guess I recall, yes, I must have. I don't recall this exact moment. I've spoken to lots of officers. Do you recall thinking that the SUV was driving right at you? It felt like it for a moment, yes. And you stated that you initially started to chase after the vehicle was briefly, but then stopped. That was my instinct at the moment because I don't know why that was my instinct at the moment. Mr. Brooks, are you done with the statement? Yes, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm done. Okay, no problem. I'll take it down. Would it be fair to say that the, uh, the unexpectedness of the event may have clouded everything that you recall about the, the event? I think there's certain aspects of the event that I have great clarity for because it was such a life-changing thing. There are certain moments that are very clear in my memory. And then there's other aspects that maybe other people noticed that may be 11 months later that are less clear because some of the other more graphic details are so strong in my memory. Sorry. It, it would be fair to say though that, or would it be rather, I'm sorry about that. Would it be fair to say that you don't recall everything from that November that, 21st it was a, evening? That would be accurate. To your recollection, would you have left out any details in your report? No. able to see any uh, license place number on I the vehicle? Was, I was not. Do you recall about how far you uh, initially had the reaction to chase after the vehicle but then turn back to your student? It was just a few steps. Do you recall exactly where you were at? where you were at I was in the parade? In terms of the order of the parade? In, in terms of uh, what intersections you may have been at? We were right, I was personally right outside of Martha Merrill's bookstore. Um, from the video footage there, there were uh, clearly a lot of uh, spectators or people that weren't actively involved in a parade. Yes. Did you at any time see any of the spectators struck? I did not. After the incident, did you see uh, any news reports about the incident? I did.
Did any news reports that you saw jog anything to your memory? Not especially. Maybe just showed different things that happened that evening in different parts of Main Street where I wasn't. But so, nothing changed my recollections of the South Bend experience. So it would be fair to say that what was reported on the news you kind of pretty much already knew? Correct. Did, did you recall the news reporting um, how many people may have been hurt? Yes. From what you recall and observe, do you think that that it, those said news reports were accurate? Objection. Grounds. Sustained. It's not relevant. About how long did you uh, stay at the parade after the incident? I did not have my watch with me that evening, but we were there for quite a while because the students had scattered and so it took us a while as well as waiting for, to make sure all the students that were injured were taken by first responders and they were overwhelmed so it took a while for first responders so, to get to everyone. So it would, be, it would be fair to say that by the time you, you actually left it, it was nightfall? That is correct. Do you recall the power going out? Uh, that did not happen till we were back at the high school. So you had already left Correct. the parade route by the time there was no power? Correct. Do you recall what time you left? I, I don't recall. It would be in the bus company records. But. No further questions. Thank you. Any redirect? Just some brief clarification, and then I'd like to show one video, Your Honor, if that's all right. Um, there were a few mentions during cross-examination about uh, your report, in quotation marks. Yes. You didn't actually sit down and type up a police report after the parade, did you? No, I did not. Or her ruled. She may answer. Can you state your answer again? I did not. In the, just if I, there is an objection, yes. let me roll. Oh, I'm sorry. First. That's okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. Go ahead. Thank you. You met with police officers after the fact and provided interviews, is that right? Correct. Okay. Um, and then do you know whether they wrote police reports summarizing those statements? If they did, I did not see those. Okay. I would like to uh, play for you exhibit number 22 one more time. Uh, and I'd like to play it for the jury as well, Your Honor, if that's all right. Objection, we saw this video numerous times at this point. Are you going to play the whole thing or parts of it? The witness was asked about whether she heard a horn honking. And so I'm Objection. simply going to play. She was not asked if she heard a horn honking. She was asked, did the sound of the parade. I recall what was asked. Um, I'm sorry, tell me again why you want the jury to see this and was, the question. Because she was not asked specifically about a horn. She offered something. In response to a question about what she heard. I simply want to play this video to see if the witness can hear the sound of a horn honking. Objection. What's the relevancy at this point? She, she never was asked the question, Your Honor. Um, I'll sustain the objection. Okay. I don't have anything else for this witness. Thank you. All right. Thank you. You may step down. Thank you.
Your next witness, please. Your Honor, the state calls Kyle Jewell. Good afternoon, sir. If you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is to my right upper riser. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand, and my clerk, Teresa, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. First thing I will have you do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each. Kyle Jewell, K-Y-L-E, J-E-W-E-L-L. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Jewell. Good afternoon. Mr. Jewell, on the day of November 21, 2021, did you attend the Waukesha Christmas Parade in downtown Waukesha? Yes. Did you come with uh, friends and family members? Yes, with family. About how many people were in your group, sir? Uh, probably seven or nine. I would have to count them That's to okay. really get the accurate number. Okay. And where did you set up along the parade route to watch the festivities? Yeah, so we were right in between those new apartments and all of chocolate. I don't know what road it was next to. Okay. And that, so you were right on Main Street, correct? Yeah. And uh, new apartments are like four or five stories high, is that right? Yep, right okay. next to Elo Chocolate. Okay, and on the north side of the road, that would be? Correct. Okay. Um, as you were sitting there, uh, what do you recall happening, sir? Yeah, so we were watching the parade. Um, had a bunch of kids in front of us, my kids, some other family uh, members, and um, at one point, you know, we had the, I believe it was the Remax, um, hot air balloon truck coming to the left of us. Um, and then we start hearing just some people yelling, stop that car. And the next thing you know, from my left, going down the road, um, you see a red SUV um, just go straight through uh, the parade. And where we were sitting at that time was the Waukesha South Band um, and just drove right through Waukesha South Band um, and just continued going. Did you see any people being struck by the SUV? Yes. Did you see any objects flying in the air? I didn't see any objects flying in the air. I saw the red SUV going over people. Okay, can you describe that for us, please? Yeah, so um, the van had just passed us, a uh, red SUV going, again, this is just an estimate, maybe 30, 40 miles an hour, um, just went straight over the Waukesha South Band, and it's not like it stopped. I mean, it, it went over. I saw the red SUV it w looked like it went in the air like over a pretty big object and it just was like a big old speed bump and kept going. Okay. Um, you saw that from your position on the side of the road? Yes. At some point did you um, get up and leave your position? I did. So when the red SUV had pretty much gone through uh, the band, uh, my reaction was to, to run after the car and honestly was trying to get into it to stop it. That was just my perspective on it. Okay. Um, I did not get into the SUV. Were you able to catch it? No. It drove off at a pretty quick speed after it, it went through the band. And you were running on foot? Correct. Okay. Prior to the, um, to the SUV hitting the students in the band, did you hear the horn on the vehicle honking at all? I did not. As the vehicle struck students in the band, did you ever see the vehicle stop? Uh, I did not. It would have slowed down a little bit as it hit people, but it did not slow down when it hit it, the band and then when it drove off. Okay. I'd like to put up exhibit number 25, please, for the witness. Go ahead. And is there anything on your screen in front of you, sir? Yes. Okay. Is this 25? Okay. And uh, you see the uh, video that's showing on your screen in front of you, sir? Yes. 
Is this a video that you've seen before? Yes, it is. And uh, do you believe this is a true and accurate representation of the events as you saw them on November 21 of 2021? Yes. Like to uh, admit number 25 and permission to play it for the jury? Mr. Brooks? Objection is a uh, hearsay. How how is everybody seeing the videos before seeing them now? You can ask that on cross exam, sir. Um, but the foundation has been laid, and Exhibit Twenty Five is received. Permission to publish is granted. All right, we're going to put it up, and then before we play anything, I'd ask if you could point out for the jury the approximate area where you and your family were stationed. How do you want me to do that? Um, that's a touch screen in front of you. That's a good question. You can either circle or mark with an X, or there's a dot you can put there, whatever. Yeah. Just the general area where you were standing. Somewhere over here. Okay. And you remember seeing the parade approaching then from your left? Yes. I'm sorry, the band, excuse me. Yes. Okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead and play this with volume, please. We pause at the 41 second mark. When do you first recall seeing that red SUV? Was it about this point or was it back further? Pretty much right when it rounded the Remax van. Okay. And then do you remember seeing it come around the left side of the Remax van and then veer to the right in front of the Remax van? Yes. And now it's headed in the direction of where you and your family are? Correct. Do you remember that, sir? Yes. What were you thinking during this? Uh, really what's going on. Um, normally, you don't see a vehicle going that quick down a parade route. Okay. Go ahead and continue playing, please. Okay, I'm going to uh, ask, we're going to play it again a little bit slower, and I want you to point out the point where you yourself get up and run after the uh, red SUV, okay? Okay. Before gonna... you have him do that, for the record, how long is this video? Thank you, Judge. The, min the video is exactly one minute in duration. Thank you. Go ahead. So play it at half speed, please. Uh, no sound, because with half speed, the sound is annoying.
You can pause it right there. Okay, we're paused at the 48 second mark. You see yourself, sir? I do. Where are you? You want me to circle, circle it? Circle it. You've just run out into the middle of the street, is that right? Or towards yeah. the middle of the street? Yes. Where were you going? Chasing after the car. What were you going to do if you caught it? Wanted to stop it. Try and stop it? Yep. You described on your direct testimony the um, seeing the car look like it was going over speed bumps. Is that right? Yes. Is that what's shown in uh, this exhibit number 25? Yes. In fact, it was going over people, not speed bumps. Correct. Yes. You keep playing. I want to see where you go. And we played it to the end, just for the record. Um, you never were able to catch up. No. But um, towards the end of that video, you're off screen. We can't see you anymore. Yes. About how far down did you chase that SUV, sir? It had to have been pretty far down the road. I don't have an exact that I can remember, um, but I ran for a pretty good amount of time. It wasn't quite to the five corners. Okay. Um, but it was a pretty good distance. And at any point along the way, did you notice the SUV stop? I did not, no. Did you see the driver of the SUV get out and check on any of the people that he had just run over? No. Did you get a good look at the driver? I didn't get a good look at the driver, no. Okay. Um, that I can remember. Sure. After you chased the SUV but were not able to catch it, did you make your way back towards your family? I did. Did you encounter injured people along the way? Yes, many of them. And were they mostly from the school band or others? Mainly from the South's band. Okay. All right. Thank you. I don't have any other questions, sir. All right. Thank you. Mr. Brooks, do you have any questions? Yes, I do. Uh, do you recall being uh, interviewed by a detective carpenter on november 24th of 2021 i do remember being inter interviewed by a, detec a detective yes any idea why it took a few days for you to be interviewed uh, just the nature of the incident um, i'm sure they had a lot to get through so i just wanted to um, wait a little bit and it wasn't something that i was going to do um, When you say it wasn't something that you was going to do, what are you referring to? Uh, just seek some counsel from some mentors. Um, after talking with them, they had advised that I should make a statement. So it would be fair to say that you didn't intend on making a report? Uh, that is correct. Can you explain why? Um, just didn't feel comfortable with it. Would it be fair to say that the events that you witnessed would make anyone want to make a report? Would that be fair to say? Yes. Uh, do you recall about what time you arrived at the parade? I do not. Do you recall what time you left? I do not. Uh, you stated earlier that you were um, with family, is that correct? Yes. Were you or any of your family members injured in the incident? No. I'm looking at the... Uh, Police report here. You did state that you didn't get a description of the driver, correct? Yes. Did you get a license place number? I did not. 
Do you recall if there was uh, any tent on the vehicle that you saw? Uh, not in the front, no. What do you mean by not in the front? Um, I did not see any tent on the front windows um, or the passenger side window. Um, from what I could remember, there was tint on the back windows. So it would be fair to say that you couldn't see into the back of the vehicle, correct? Correct. Do you recall how many occupants were in the vehicle? Yes. Even though you couldn't see the entire inside of the vehicle? Yes. Do you recall saying in your report that, or saying in the report that was reported by uh, Detective Carpenter that, well, I'm gonna read it what it says. He indicated that after the vehicle struck the south van, he chased it and got to within approximately an arm's reach of the vehicle. Do you recall that? I do not. Any reason why that would be reported? Uh, a lot happening at that moment um, during that whole incident. Uh, it very well just could have been what I had thought. Um, and it does go out of frame, so I can't exactly remember what happens once uh, the video and myself goes out of frame. Do you recall being the arms link from the vehicle? Uh, I cannot remember right now, no. At what point did you see the vehicle slow down? As it went over Waukesha South Band. And what did the vehicle do after that? It sped up. Do you recall describing the acceleration as rapid? Yes. Would you say that the video that we just saw depicts a rapid acceleration? Yes. Do you recall stating that it seems as if the driver of the vehicle was hitting the gas as hard as he could? Yes. And how would you be able to tell that? Um, the nature of a vehicle going over people. Um, you would think that the gas pedal would not be pushed as you're going over people. Um, and as the car continued, the red SUV continued over, went over the Walker South band and continued to accelerate. I could only imagine that the gas pedal was being pushed very hard after just going over people. So you were making an assumption, would that be fair to say? I wouldn't say it was an assumption, um, just from driving a vehicle, knowing what happens when you go over um, a large object, it typically slows the car down. In order to speed it back up, the only thing that you can do is hit the gas pedal. You can hit the gas pedal or would you hit the gas pedal as hard as you could? From what I remembered, it looked like the gas pedal was being hit hard. The, the, the vehicle accelerated very quickly. Would it be fair to say that you would have to be present in the vehicle to tell if the gas pedal was pushed no. hard, extremely hard, as you say? No. Or as hard as you could? No. You would be able to tell that from an outside observation? Yes. Did you observe uh, the, the route of the vehicle after what well, the video shows, you kind of go off the screen and did you observe where the vehicle went at that point? Yes. Did it continue straight or 
Did it turn? Continue down the parade route. Do you recall about how far? Uh, no. Do you recall seeing any brake lights? Uh, no. Even when it briefly slowed down? That'd be correct. So would it be fair to say that in order to slow a vehicle down, you have to brake? Not necessarily. And what is the necessarily? Hitting something or going over something naturally will slow a vehicle down. So how far would you estimate that the vehicle was traveling before it slowed down? I can't remember that. Um, can you pull up uh, Exhibit 25 again? Do you want it to the jury or just to the witness? Um, to everybody. Okay. There you go. Is the sound it? You want to play it all the way? Can you play it from about thirty seconds? Yes, yeah, about right. The counter reads 29 seconds at this point, Your Honor. Thank you. Well, we're roughly around that area. Yeah. Pause right there. From your uh, perspective, is the sound that you, that you just heard, could that have been a horn? Could we replay it? Are you able to answer just based on what you heard? No. You did state that you didn't hear any horn, correct? Correct. It would be fair to say that it was pretty loud at that point in the parade, correct? Yeah. Do you think the, the noise would have impaired your hearing in any way at that at that point in time? No. So would it be fair to say that you would have been able to hear anything coming towards your area where you were sitting or anything that was coming towards your area from the band, from, from the parade, rather? I don't understand your question. Would you have heard, if, if, if there was anything unusually loud or just loud enough, would you have heard it from where you were seated at? I, I don't know how to answer that. Is it possible that a horn could have been beat that you didn't hear? No, horns are pretty loud. It would have been heard even over all the noise of the parade and the band and the people and the, you would have been able to clearly hear? Yes. Do you recall what you saw the driver doing at the time that it passed the area that you were seated at? Uh, driving the car. The Did you observe any other actions by the driver? No. Just focused on the road that was up ahead of him. And there's nothing about the description that stood out to you or caught your eye that maybe you could recall? 
in regards to what? The description of the driver. Um, I, I could tell there was one person in the car. Um, that, I mean, I could see it. They're wearing some sort of hat or sweatshirt. That was about it. And after uh, the, the vehicle passed where you were seated at, and about how long did you stay at the parade after what you saw? I wouldn't be able to remember that. Did you attempt to help anyone injured or check for your family here? Uh, at that point, when I started running back, um, there were a lot of bodies on the ground. Um, and, and from the looks of it, um, there was already people helping them. So my next reaction was get back to my family. So with all the people uh, that appeared to be injured, you didn't stop to render any aid to any one of them? Objection, our demand is done. Grounds. Sustained. Sustained. Next question, please. Was there anything else about the vehicle that stuck out to you? No. Did you see any news reports about the incident once you got your family home? Uh, I did not. Did you hear about it in the, the days after? Did you hear about anything related to the event in the days after? Well, Leading up to your November 24th interview with uh, Detective Carpenter? Uh, I'm sure I had saw general things. Um, we really did not watch the TV too much. Um, there was just a lot of emotional um, stuff that we were just working through. So it would be fair to say you purposely didn't watch news reports yes. that were related to the incident? Uh, we don't really watch news to begin with, but uh, this just kind of made that a little bit more that we didn't turn the TV on, so we, we did not watch much news. So at any time, uh, did you see any uh, mug shot or, or any type of pictures related to this uh, suspected driver? Uh, I did not, no. At any time, do you recall hearing the name of the alleged defendant or suspect? Uh, at some point in time, yes, I did hear the name. Was that really quickly after the incident, or had it been some time that passed before you heard, heard that? Uh, there was a little bit of time that had passed before I heard it. And you yourself didn't file a claim in this matter, did you? Objection, relevance. Grounds. If you can be a little more specific, if you mean a claim related to any, uh, related to the parade. Did you make a, a, a claim of being an injured party or did anybody in your family make a claim of being an injured party? No. You made reference to seeing it, uh, the Exhibit 25 video before your testimony today, correct? Could you say that again? You made reference earlier that you had saw the, the video that was shown before you testified today, correct? Yes. About how many times have you saw the video before today? Once. So today was your second time seeing the same video? Correct. Is there anything that was there anything that brought back or helped you recall anything that you may have missed when you did your initial report? Seeing the video for a second time? Could you ask that once more? Seeing the video just now for the second time. Did it jump did it bring back any any memory that you may have not reported before or did it bring back something that you may have missed, overlooked? Not that I know of or remember, no. 
Were you aware that you might be called to testify in this matter? Uh, yes. So it'd be fair to say that you were anticipating being a witness? No. Whom were you contacted by about being a witness in this matter? Uh, I wouldn't know the Waukesha District Attorney. Let, let the record reflect that the witness made a hand gesture towards the prosecution table. Yes. The record will so reflect. Thank you. So it would be fair to say that you were contacted about testifying in this matter, directly from the Waukesha District Attorney's Office? Yes. Do you know who the plaintiff is in this matter? Objection irrelevant. Grounds? Not relevant, sustained. Next question. Are you aware of any injured party or plaintiff in this matter? I am not. You are not? That's correct. Have you read or seen it, any complaint besides your own in this matter? You mean a statement or do you mean a, a criminal complaint? A, a complaint, any complaint. Long object to vagueness and relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Try to rephrase that if you would like. I'm sustaining it as to the form of the question, sir. Have you seen any other statements by any parties other than yourself in relation to this incident? No. Are you the only person present from your family that uh, made a statement or a report? Objection relevance. Grounds. Overall, his family may, was there. Overall, he may answer if anyone else in his family provided a statement. No, they did not. You stated earlier that it was difficult. Well, you stated that you don't really watch the news to begin with, but it, the incident made it more difficult to do that, correct? A little bit, yes. Uh, would, would that be said of your family as well? Uh, yes. So there was some type of impact? In regards to what? In, in regards to being present at the parade? Yes, there, there was a, a huge emotional impact on our family. Do you know of any reason why no one besides yourself made a report? Objection, argumentative. Grounds. Irrelevant. Sustained. Grounds. Next question. So as far as you know, you've, you've never seen or interacted with the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained. Under 906.11, new topic please. One not already covered. Do you recall Do you recall the motion of the vehicle as it passed where you were seated? He clarified at what location he was referring to. Thank you. In regards to what motion? How the vehicle was moving, driving. Uh, it, where I was sitting, it would have been my left side, and the car was approaching from my left side, driving. I'm, I don't know north, south, east, all that stuff, but it, right as to be on my left, 
proceeded to go through on my right down Main Street. Where, from where you were seated, were you seated to where there were people in front, standing in front of where you were seated? Yes, my family. Anybody else besides your family? Nope, just my family. It would be fair to say from the video that there were quite a few people standing in the general area where you were seated at. Would that be fair to say? Uh, yes, most of the people in front of me were kids, so they were littler than me. Did you observe any one of those kids being struck? No. So it would be fair to say that the vehicle did not strike anybody that was seated on the curb right there where you were at? Specifically right where I was at, no. In your opinion, after observing people struck, in your opinion, how did the vehicle miss the people that were seated directly in front of you? Objection beyond grounds. Scope of, beyond scope grounds. of knowledge and irrelevant. Grounds. Mr. Brooks, let her state her objection without interruption. The objection is sustained. Next question. So would it be fair to say that the only people you observed being struck was the Waukesha South Band? Yes. Approximately how many people would you say by estimate? Right now I can't remember. It would be a handful. Would it be fair to say that there were hundreds, even thousands of people present for the parade? Yes. And you have only observed a handful of people struck? Waukesha South Band is a pretty large band. Um, and the red SUV went right through it. If I had to estimate 10, maybe 15, I wouldn't know the exact number that were struck by the SUV. Would it be fair to say that that, that number is fairly low to all the people that was in the area at the time? Objection argumentative, Your Honor. Grounds. Sustained as to the form of the question, Mr. Brooks. <coughs> next question. Would it, next question or rephrase? Well, I, sus I sustained it. You can ask your next question. Would you identify yourself as a, a, a injured party in this matter? Objection asked and answered. Grounds. Sustained. Would you identify as an injured party in this matter? Objection. Grounds. S sustained. Asked and answered. Mr. Brooks on 90611. That was also not a, a question I would allow to be asked. So please move on. Very brief, I'm going to ask the clerk to please turn the monitors back on, uh, Exhibit 25. Mr. Brooks had previously asked this to be paused. It's paused at the 37 second mark. Okay. And I, I do not recognize that name, nor do I consent to being called by it. Your objection is noted. Go ahead, Attorney Opper. I'm going to ask Ms. Gussie to please continue playing. It's starting at the 37 second mark. And then I'm going to ask you to pause Objection, it. What is the rele relevancy of it being played from the 37 second mark? Your objection is noted. It's overruled. Is that with or without sound? Uh, with sound is fine. Yes, please sound. Go ahead. Pause. 
pause. We're stopped at the 42 second mark. Mr. Jewell, at this point, would you say the SUV is very close to you and your family? Yes. At this point, did you hear the SUV honking its horn in any manner? No. Would you say the SUV is very close to the vehicle in the middle of the road containing the Waukesha South mascot? Yes. Would you also say it's very close to the two people standing in the street, one wearing a Santa hat and the other, I think, is dressed like a lion or some type of character? Yes. Did you hear the horn honking at this location, sir? No. The band has already passed you to your right down the street, correct? Yes. Was there any music being played from the Remax uh, um, not, vehicle that you recall? Not that I remember, no. Just the hot air balloon? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Those are all my questions, and I'm stopping it at the 42 second mark, Your Honor. Thank you. Sir, you may step down. Could Mr. Jewell please be excused, Your Honor? He may. We do need a brief uh, discussion outside the presence of the jury before our next witness, Your Honor. Okay, very well. I'll excuse the jury. I'll rise for the jury. All right, go ahead, Attorney Offer. Actually, I'll cover this, Judge. Very well, go ahead. The next uh, witness is Thomas Green. This is the witness that we previously raised the issue about having a one prior criminal conviction, it's from 2005. A CCAP printout was provided to the defendant for the misdemeanor offense of criminal trespass. Um, the offense date is from 17 years ago. The witness was 21 years old at that time. He's now 38, has no other intervening criminal convictions, uh, was not originally a crime of deception. I believe that it's not relevant uh, for purposes of impeachment. I'd ask the court to exclude that conviction from this witness's testimony. Mr. Brooks, do you have a legal argument on that? Yes, I do. Um, uh, the main thing is um, this issue wasn't really discussed to this length until it was time for this witness to be called to the stand. Um, well, that's when I said I would take it up, is prior to that witness's testimony. I even gave you the statute that is at issue, and it's 906.09, impeachment by evidence of conviction of crime or adjudication of delinquency. Here's, here's why statute book out and it's in there if you want to review it quickly I'll give you an opportunity but I do need to address this and now is the proper time 906.09 there's a general rule in sub 1 and the exclusions under sub 2 and the factors for the court to consider in evaluating whether to admit evidence of a prior conviction for the purpose of attacking a witness's truthful character. Mr. 
before I have you address it, let me ask the state this. Um, how long do you anticipate your direct examination to be? All right. So someone we could and should be able to get through fairly quickly, yes. both for direct and cross. All right, go ahead, Mr. Brooks. What's your I'm, argument? I'm, I'm, I'm still, I wanted to make sure I heard what you said, so I stopped reading briefly. I guess I would, from what I've read so far, I would go to um, 906.09 uh, sub 2. Um, it would be, it would be kind of problematic. And I say that because if I was going to take the stand, my record would be brought up. And some things on my record was done 20 something years ago, but it was still half bearing. So I believe that the, it should be, it should be fair. It should be the same. Um, I believe that if uh, the, the witness knew that there was a possibility that they would give testimony and agree to give testimony, then they also agreed that their credibility can be questioned. I think that's really a fundamental thing to be able to cross-examine on my part would, would be to see if they're credible, to see that they would honor their oath that they give in the court to be truthful. And part of being able to ask them questions like this pertaining to a, a, a criminal conviction would be relevant. You do understand the inquiry is limited to the following. Have you been convicted of a crime? The answer I allow is yes. They would say yes. The follow-up would be, if so, how many times? And in this case, my understanding is there's just one. Don't uh, get into the specifics of it. That's not proper uh, questioning uh, for impeachment. Do you understand that? I'll follow all right, let me hear from the state in response. So again, looking at the factors uh, under 90609 sub 2, uh, just about every factor weighs in favor of not uh, informing the jury of this conviction. We've got uh, a conviction date of April 4th of 2006. So we've got, uh, again, Uh, over a, well over a decade before uh, the conviction. We've got uh, whether this witness was rehabilitated or pardoned. Uh, according to the CCAP records, there was a probation sentence and probation was discharged, so there's no indication that this witness was ever revoked from probation, and there's no uh, re-offending uh, evidence or any new cases or any new uh, convictions. So that, again, that factor weighs in favor of not including this. Gravity of the crime, this is um, an entry into a locked building or construction site, contrary to 943.15 sub 1. So it's a misdemeanor offense. Uh, so that weighs in favor of not including it. It does not, on its face, involve any dishonesty or false statements by the witness. Uh, frequency of the conviction, again, it's just the one. Um, and in terms of any other relevant factors, as an offer of proof, I'll inform the court that this witness is going to testify about his and his family's presence uh, near the Martha Merrill bookstore um, on the day of the parade, the positioning of his children, and what he remembers in terms of the SUV uh, driving along the parade route and clipping his two children who were seated on the curb of the, watching the parade. There's uh, two videos uh, of the driving conduct in question. They are not they're not as clear as some of the videos we showed with the band. In fact, one of them is the video we showed with the band. 
uh, and you can see spectators sitting on the side of the road, but in terms of impeaching the witness, I think uh, Mr. Brooks should be fine just relying on the videos uh, in, in asking the witness about that. Um, entering into uh, entering into anything with is deceptive in nature just right off the bat that's deceptive in nature why would you enter into something that you're obviously not supposed to be into you entered into something because you were not supposed to be in there that's deceptive in nature um, it, it, it's also not enough uh, information that would suggest that the uh, probation wasn't discharged by revocation. It, it's not clear. Um, and also, the prosecution just stated on record that they will only need about 10 minutes to of testimony from this witness, but now they're talking about videos. That it seems like it's going to be a little bit more than ten minutes. Um, I feel that I should be able to at least question uh, the, the the credibility of this witness at, at the very minimal. Well, you would be able to question the credibility just through cross examination. But let me get to the heart of this issue. And the general rule is as follows: for the purpose of attacking character. For truthfulness, a witness may be asked whether the witness has ever been convicted of a crime or adjudicated delinquent and the number of such convictions or adjudications. If the witness's answers are consistent with the previous determination of the court under sub 3, then no further inquiry may be made unless it is for the purpose of rehabilitating the witness's character for truthfulness. The Sub 2 then of this statute talks about exclusion. It says evidence of a conviction of a crime or an adjudication of delinquency may be excluded if its probative value is substantially outweighed by the danger of unfair prejudice. Factors for a court to consider in evaluating whether to admit evidence of prior convictions for the purpose of attacking a witness's truthful character include the lapse of time since the conviction, the rehabilitation or pardon of the person convicted, the gravity of the crime, the involvement of dishonesty or false statement in the crime, the frequency of the convictions, and any other relevant factors. So as I consider all of that, I would include in the any other relevant factors that this is a witness that has been brought to testify by the state against the accused. Um, this conviction is for a misdemeanor offense of uh, criminal, can I have the exact, I wrote down criminal trespass, but I just want to make sure I have it accurate. Yes, the, the statute in question is 943.15 sub 1, and it's listed on CCAP as an entry into slash onto building slash construction site slash room. All right, so a version of criminal trespass. All right. Um, Apparently, the particular witness, this was 17 plus years ago, the witness was 21 years of age, was sentenced to probation, nothing on the record before this court suggests that probation uh, was revoked, I'm not aware of any reoffending, um, meaning that's the only conviction for this witness. Um, this is a witness in this case who will apparently testify about where he was seated with his family in the in relation to the uh, driving of the red SUV through the parade uh, in front of Martha Merrill bookstore so clearly relevant to the case and the charges at hand um, when looking at whether evidence of a conviction of a crime may be excluded, and specifically in this case, if its probative value is substantially outweighed by the danger of unfair prejudice. I think sometimes we skip over that part of the statute, which is the standard this court must look at, not just the factors, but whether in light of those factors um, is the probative value substantially outweighed by the danger of unfair prejudice. Um, as I commented on earlier, the nature of the inquiry is very limited. It's, have you been convicted of a crime? Yes or no. 
and then how many times and in that case it would be in this case it would be one in light of that um, and the other factor that I noted even though there are some factors that I could say would warrant exclusion I think it's best to um, err on the side of caution as we sometimes say and allow the witness to be questioned about this prior conviction under the statute and that is the very limited inquiry of uh, have you been convicted of a crime the answer should be yes and then how many times one and that's it um, mr. Brooks you may ask a single follow-up on that is is it true you've been convicted of one crime but we're not going to spend a lot of time on that that's going to be my caveat to all of this um, you cannot ask repeated questions of this witness about that um, the what jury will this? further get instructed later on about the purpose of a prior conviction on um, that it bears solely on credibility and then ultimately it's up to the jury to determine uh, whether or what to believe um, so that's my ruling on this now with that it's now 415 would you like the witness to testify today yes all right any questions mr. Brooks no, I was just going to say, what if I just wanted to, what if I didn't really want to go into it? What if I just wanted one question just to say, have you ever been convicted of a crime and just left it at that? That's fine. I'm sure the state's going to ask the questions first, though. That's typically how this goes. All right. Bring the jury out. Just need a moment to Understood. This. Understood. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Attorney Wickow, you may call your next witness. State Call Thomas Green. All right, good afternoon, Mr. Green. If you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is on my right, up a riser. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand. My clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you, God? Yes. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. First thing I will have you do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each. Thomas Green, T-H-O-M-A-S-G-R-E-E-N-E. -E -E. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Green, what city or village do you live in? Uh, the town of Merton. Were you at the Waukesha Christmas Parade on November 21st of 2021? Yes. Who were you with at the parade? I was with my wife and three children. Okay. Do you remember where you were along the parade route? Um, I know I was across the street from a bookstore. Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask that we project Exhibit 15 uh, for everybody, please. 15. Go ahead. And can we zoom in on the middle of the screen there? Down a little bit. Right there. Okay. Uh, do you see your kids' names anywhere on that exhibit? Yes, I do. Could you? That's a touch screen in front of you. Could you circle them for me? 
Okay. Uh, do you see the line connecting those names to an orange star? Yes, I do. And then can we zoom out one click, please? Do you recognize uh, the neighborhood depicted in this map? Um, kind of, yes. Do you know what it is? Um, downtown Waukesha. Okay. Does that orange star with the line to your kids' names, does that accurately reflect where you were positioned along the parade route? Yes. Okay. Um, can we next pull up exhibit number 29, just for the witness? Go ahead. Do you see an image in front of you? Yes. Okay, do you, can you describe for us what we're looking at? Uh, we're looking at a intersection where me, my wife, and my kids were sitting during the parade. Does this accurately depict the intersection, minus all the people, uh, as it was set up on the afternoon of November 21st, 2021? Yes. Let's move exhibit 29 into evidence and ask for permission to publish. Objection. Overruled, is, Exhibit 29 is received, permission to publish is granted. Can we get rid of that side stuff? <laughs> Could you use the touch screen in front of you to draw a circle or an oval around the area where you and your family were standing? Uh, and can we please uh, save this um, annotation as Exhibit 29A? And I would move that into the record, please. 29A will be saved and ultimately printed, and then it's received as well. We can take that down. Can you describe for us what happened, what you observed that afternoon uh, as you were watching the Christmas parade? Uh, yes, we were just watching uh, the Christmas parade as we normally do, go to lots of parades as a family. And um, I heard a loud crash noise to my right and I looked that way. And then I seen a car uh, <laughs> running over the marching band and um, as soon as the car had ran over the marching band, it swerved towards me and my family, and then um, just proceeded on down the parade route. Down Main Street? Yep. Okay. Can you describe for us how uh, you, your wife, and your children were positioned? Uh, we were facing the parade, straight on. Where was your wife in relation to you? Uh, to my left. Were you standing or sitting? Standing. Facing the parade route, I'm assuming? Yes. Okay. Where were your kids in relation to you? Um, in front of me. How many kids do you have? Three. And which of the three kids were in front of you? Uh, Charlie and Lily were in front of me sitting on a bench. Okay, what kind of bench? Uh, fold-out bench. How far away from you were they? Uh, maybe three feet. If you wanted to reach out and touch them, could you have? Yes. How old was Charlie uh, back in November of 2021? Objection, irrelevant. Overruled. Nine. And what about Lily? How old was she back then? Objection, irrelevant. Overruled. Eleven. What happened as the, uh, the vehicle that you described approached your family? Uh, it swerved towards us. Can you describe the direction of travel when you say swerve? Um, it, like cardinal direction? Or even left and right, however you can describe it. Um, I mean, we were witness. Overruled, the, he may answer the question. <laughs> um, we were facing the parade route and it swerved towards us. Okay. And just for the record, um, he used his right hand in a gesture <coughs> towards him, almost like a cupping motion towards him. Go ahead. Thank you. I'm going to ask to display Exhibit 22 for the witness only. Go ahead. And 
and we'll, uh, can we start around the 12 second mark, please? <coughs> I'm just gonna play a few seconds for you um, to see if you can identify what's happening in the video, okay? So we'll, uh, let's turn this, make sure the sound's off. It is, all right, let's play from 11 seconds. Pause at 19 seconds. Uh, do you recognize that portion of the video you just watched? Yes. What does it show? Uh, it shows where the SUV had ran over the band where I had first heard it coming, and then it's swerving towards my family. Um, so I would ask that we publish that portion of the video from 12 seconds to 19 seconds. Okay. And Let's play that at a reduced speed of about 50%, please. No sound. We've paused at 21 seconds. Uh, can you circle for us the area where you and your family were at this moment in time? Objection. I thought it was being played till 19 seconds. Um, your objection is noted. It's overruled. Go ahead, circle, sir. And can we please have a, <laughs> a saved uh, screen grab of that and mark it as Exhibit 22A and move it into evidence? 22A is received. It will be marked and printed later. Uh, could we show for the witness only Exhibit 27, please? Do you see a video on your screen? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna. We're gonna play a few seconds and let you recognize it. Paused at five seconds. Do you recognize that video? Yes. What does it show? Uh, looks like the SUV right after it ran into uh, my kids. Move exhibit, excuse me, is that video an accurate depiction of how you saw the events unfold that afternoon? Yes. I move exhibit 27 into evidence and ask to publish. Objection, it's hearsay. Exhibit 27 is received permission to publish as granted. We'll play this once all the way through. It's 16 seconds, there's no audio. Okay, we can take that down. The, uh, the area of that video that's relevant to you and your family would be the top left portion, is that right? Yes. Okay. Do you know whether your two kids were struck by the vehicle? Yes, they were. Okay. And that's consistent with way that, where they were sitting along the curb? Yes. All right. I don't have any other questions. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Brooks. Um, you stated that all the videos you just saw were uh, accurate depictions of what you observed that day, correct? Yes. Have you seen any of these videos before today? No. So today is your first time seeing any of this footage? Yes.
Mr. Green, have you ever been convicted of a crime? Yes. Do you remember what you did when the vehicle passed you? Yes. You state for the record what you did immediately following the, uh, the vehicle passing you? I ran to see if my kids were okay. Um, you stated that your wife was standing to your left. Do you recall what she did? No, I don't. Do you recall checking to see if your wife was okay? No, I don't. Do you recall getting uh, a look at the driver of the vehicle? Yes, I do. And what did you see? Um, I seen somebody in a hoodie with dark skin. Uh, did you observe anyone else in the vehicle? No, I did not. Could you see the entire vehicle, passenger seat and back seats? I don't recall seeing anybody in the back seats. Um, the windows were tinted. So it would be fair to say if there was somebody seated in the back, you wouldn't have seen them? I couldn't say. Did you get a license plate number of the vehicle? No, I did not. From your opinion about how fast would you say the vehicle was traveling? Hard to say. After the vehicle passed you, did you observe it strike anyone else? No, I did not. Were you injured during the, the incident in any way? No, I was not. Was your wife injured in any way during the incident? No, she was not. Do you recall about how long you were at the parade before the incident happened? I do not. Do you recall about how long you stayed after the incident? No longer than three minutes. So you, you got right out of there immediately after? Yes. Do you recall making a report of what happened at the incident? No. You don't recall talking to uh, Officer Sepakan? I did not talk to anybody at the incident. You don't recall making any police report to what happened? At not the at the incident, no. In the days following the incident, did you make any report? Yes, I did. Do you recall who the officer was that you reported the incident to? No, I do not. <laughs> so earlier you said that you heard uh, a crash to your right, which alerted you to the vehicle approaching. Is that fair to say? Yes. Do you know what that crash was? The vehicle hitting the band. So before you heard that crash, you, you wasn't alerted to the presence of a vehicle approaching? No, I was not. Would it be fair to say that it was really loud during the parade that, at that time? Yes.
Do you recall in the report that you made that you initially thought the vehicle was part of the parade and it was an accident? Yes. So it's fair to say from when you first saw the vehicle approaching that that's what you thought? Yes. Do you recall the vehicle uh, swerving? Yes, I do. Do you remember what direction the vehicle swerved in? To the left, towards me and my family. And did it swerve away from your family at that point? After it hit my family, yes. Do you remember stating that you were not sure if the people being run over were part of the parade or guests watching the parade? I do not recall making that statement, no. Do you recall the make or model of the SUV? No, I do not. Do you recall the license plate number of the SUV? No, I do not. Do you remember stating that when you saw the SUV coming, you froze? Yes. And do you remember saying that you stared directly at it as it was driving towards you? Yes. And you didn't get an accurate description of the driver? Uh, I had already stated that I seen a tan-skinned person with a hood on. You said dark skin. Objection. That's not a question and argumentative. Oh, is there Brown. a question, Mr. Brooks? You can't testify, but you can question him. So your last statement, I'll strike. You, <clears throat> ask your question. Did you not state earlier that you saw a dark skin driver? Yes. And did you now just state that you saw a tan skin driver? Um, they both seem the same to me. Would that be yes? Yes. Thank you. So from your perspective, dark skin and tan skin is the same? Objection, absent. Grounds. Argumentative, next question. You can rephrase. What would you consider to be dark skin? Grounds. Overruled. <coughs> you may answer. It's hard to say. What would you consider to be tan skin? Darker than Caucasian, I guess. Would Would it be fair to say that uh, there? There is different types of shades of color to people. Would that be fair to say? Yes. He answered the question. His answer may stand. Do you recall if the driver was, was uh, doing anything, gesturing or doing anything? No. Do you recall hearing gunshots? No. Any idea why that would be in the report? Objection, lacks Grounds. foundation. Um, sustained as to the form of the question, lacks foundation. Do you recall stating that, well, let me read from the report. Thomas stated they heard gunshots and he picked up Charles and they ran back to their vehicle. Do you recall making that statement? 
I recall an officer coming down the street yelling gunshots fired. Any idea why you would be mistaken in your report that you heard the gunshots? Objection mischaracterizes Grounds. the um, Sustained lack of foundation as to the form of the question. I'm reading directly from the report, Your Honor. Directly from the report. That's not the issue, Mr. Brooks. The issue is, is, is it his statement or a summary of his statement? Because that makes a difference to the foundation you have to lay. Um, it does not say summary. Uh, I'll object if that was a question for the witness. If it was an argument with the court, I'll withdraw that objection. I believe it was a statement to the court. I don't know what you're looking at, um, but if it's a witness statement, typically there's something either signed, sometimes police officers summarize what witnesses say to them, so that's what I'm referring to as a summary. And if it's in a summary, typically if it's a direct attribution to a witness, it's in quotes. So with that, ask your question. This is not in quotes, so I'm, but I'm going to assume this is summary. Do you remember stating in your summary report that you heard gunshots? No. Do you recall if If the injuries suffered by your family were broken bones? They were not. So were they bruises? Yes. About how long would you say that your family was treated at the hospital before being released? Hard to say. Uh, was this a significant amount of time, a few hours? A few hours, yes. But to your recollection, they were treated and they're released? Yes. Who is Nicole? My wife. Do you recall Nicole making uh, any statements to law enforcement? She made she made one, yes. Do you recall Nicole stating that she heard gunshots? No, I do not. Well, been an objection. It calls for hearsay. It's sustained. Uh, any answer that he gave us struck. Jury shall disregard it. Your Honor, I'm also reading this from the summary. Question him about what he knows, not what other people said to him. No, the question was, did he know? Did, do you recall her saying that she heard gunshots? You're asking him to confirm hearsay, so it's sustained. Next <coughs> question or rephrase. Like, are you aware? <laughs> Are you aware if she heard gunshots or not? I'm not aware. Is it fair to say that right after that you ran straight to your vehicle? Right after what? Right after the incident. There was a slight delay. And what was that delay? <clears throat> Seeing if our kids were okay. And then from that, straight to the vehicle. After the officer came running down the street saying shots fired, we picked up our kids and ran. So you decided to leave after you heard an officer saying shots fired or because of the incident at the parade? 
after the officer said shots fired. So would it be fair to say that you weren't initially inclined to leave because of the incident, but because of the shots fired? Objection. Grounds. Overruled. He may answer. And then move on. Um, could you repeat the question, please? Would it be fair to say that you were prompted to leave because of the shots fired and not the incident that happened at the parade? I don't really understand what you're asking. What prompted you to leave? When the officer said shots fired. So the incident that happened didn't prompt you to leave? No. Grounds? Overruled. He may, he may answer if he understands the question. We did not want to leave right away because my son said he couldn't feel his legs. And there was a woman there helping us that said he might have a back injury that we should not move him. Um, to your recollection, was that woman a, a, a nurse or a medical professional? I don't know. Would it be fair to say that she was making an assumption? I don't know. Do you recall the woman's name? No, I don't. Do you recall if she was a spectator or someone uh, marching or, or... I don't know. Do you recall uh, the description of the woman that told you not to move your child? I'll object. Relevance. Grounds. Overruled. You may answer. Caucasian, blonde hair. So it'd be fair to say she seemed pretty concerned? Very concerned. So why would you not immediately leave at that point? Because I didn't know if he had a back injury or what the extent of his injuries were. And if it was a spinal injury, I didn't want to pick him up. Did you try to make a call for medical attention at that point? I did not. <clears throat> And what prompt you not to seek medical attention if you had a assumption that the injuries could be severe? This all happened within about a two second time frame. I mean, it was, it was so fast, everything was chaotic and I mean, there wasn't really time to do anything besides trying to see if my kids were okay and try to compose myself to take care of them. So it would be, it would be fair to say that you were pretty much like just frozen. You didn't, you didn't know what to do and how to go about doing it. Yes. Do you recall your wife uh, trying to call for medical attention? No. Do you recall anyone that you were standing next to or, or in front of attempting to call medical attention? No. Do you recall saying in the summarized report this statement? Thomas stated Charles was laying on his back and had blacked out. To my recollection, yes. You recall saying that to the officer? I recall my son saying that. Do you recall making that statement to the officer that interviewed you? No, I do not. Would it be fair to say that that 
is in the report because you may have said that to the officer? Yes. But you don't recall? I do not. Did you see any other children struck by the vehicle? Uh, the band. Any My other children? Small children. Small children. No, I do not. But you do recall small children being present, correct? Yes. No further questions. Can you redirect? Thank you. You testified on cross-examination that you initially thought the vehicle was part of the parade and that it was an accident. Do you recall giving that testimony? Yes. Did you continue to think that it was an accident? Objection. You're saying. No, so, I did Hold on. Overruled, he may answer. Once the vehicle kept going after hitting the band, I realized that it was not a part of the parade. What about the vehicle's path of travel led you to that realization? The speed that it had accelerated. You recall testifying on cross-examination that you don't recall the make and model or license plate number of the SUV? Remember seeing yes. that? Yes. How many uh, SUVs or vehicles in general did you see striking people at during the parade route? Objection, irrelevant. Overrule. Just the one. Uh, you testified that you've been convicted of a crime in the past. How many times? Once. You testified a little bit about uh, the injuries that your two kids sustained. You had a third child with you at the parade, is that right? Yes. And was that third child injured in any way? She was not. Okay. Um, <coughs> speaking about the two kids who were, do you recall in general what their injuries were? Um, my son had nerve damage to his knees and my daughter just had severe bruising. Do you know what part of their bodies, respectively, uh, were struck? My son was struck in the knees, and my daughter was struck in her hand. Do you remember if it was the right knee or both knees, or the left knee? It was both yeah. knees. Oh, hold on. Uh, objection is overruled. He may answer. Can you repeat your answer? Both knees. And what about your daughter? Which, which hand? Right hand. And they were sitting facing the parade route? Yes. So what direction would the SUV have traveled uh, from their perspective? Right to left or left to right or something different? Right to left. Okay. I think we're all set. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, sir. You may step down. Thank you. You may. This will be our last witness today. I will have the instruction for the jury before I excuse you. Do not begin your deliberations and discussion of the case until all the evidence is presented and I have instructed you on the law. Do not discuss this case among yourselves or with anyone else until your final deliberations in the jury room. This order is not limited to face-to-face -face conversations. It also extends to all forms of electronic communications. Do not use any electronic devices such as a mobile phone or computer, text or instant messaging, or social networking sites to send or receive any information about this case or your experience as a juror. If you come in contact with the parties, lawyers, interpreters, or witnesses, do not speak with them. For their part, the parties, lawyers, interpreters, and witnesses will not contact or speak with the jurors. Do not listen to any conversation about this case. Do not research any information that you personally think might be, might be helpful to you in understanding the issues presented. 
Do not investigate this case on your own or visit the scene, either in person or by any electronic means. Do not read any newspaper reports or listen to any news reports on radio, television, over the internet, or any other ap electronic application or tool about this trial. Do not consult dictionaries, computers, electronic applications, social media, the internet, or other reference materials for additional information. Do not seek information regarding the public records of any party or witness in this case. Any information you obtain outside the courtroom could be misleading, inaccurate, or incomplete. Relying on this information is unfair because the parties would not have the opportunity to refute, explain, or correct it. Do not communicate with anyone about this trial or your experience as a juror while you are serving on this jury. Do not use a computer, cell phone, or other electronic device, including personal wearable electronics applications or tools with communication capabilities to share any information about this case. For example, do not communicate by telephone, blog post, email, text message, instant message, social media post, or in any other way on or off the computer. Do not permit anyone to communicate with you about this matter either in person, electronically, or by any other means. If anyone does so despite your telling them not to, you should report that to me. I appreciate that it is tempting when you go home in the evening to discuss this case with another member of your household, but you may not do so. This case must be decided by you, the jurors, based on the evidence presented in this courtroom. People not serving on this jury have not heard the evidence and it is improper for them to influence your deliberations and decision in this case. After the trial is completed, you are free to communicate with anyone in any manner. These rules are intended to assure that jurors remain impartial throughout the trial. If any juror has reason to believe that another juror has violated these rules, you should report that to me. If jurors do not comply with these rules, it could result in a new trial involving additional time and significant expense to the parties and the taxpayers. You are to decide the case solely on the evidence offered and received at trial. With that, uh, you are excused for the evening. We'll see you tomorrow morning. All rise for the jury, please. All right, thank you. Be seated. Anything else we need to address today from the state? Rather, the defendant did raise um, an issue where he cited three cases regarding jurisdiction of this court to hear this matter. Um, I have had the opportunity to review those three cases. I am um, able to address those now if the court wishes. I'd like to address them tomorrow morning. I frankly need to read them. So, all right. Anything else from the state? No, thank you, Judge. Mr. Brooks? Um, just so I'm clear, the, on these subpoenas where it says, you are further required to bring with you the following. Do I leave that blank or what, what should I put there? Just so I'm clear. I can't give you advice on that. I only wanted you to understand that witnesses would not generally have their police reports or statements made. Those are usually kept by the police department. And so you would need to subpoena the custodian of the police records in order to get additional, you know, copies of, of that. If you think there's something else that they have that would be in their possession and that's relevant to this case, that would be different. So I hope that adequately answers your question. I, I don't understand, but... Um... <clears throat> If there's something specific, you can ask the state if there's some follow-up based upon the discovery that you have. But you should have everyone's statements. I guess the only thing I was, so she, 
so should I put bring your statement? I mean, I don't. I don't know that they would have it. What I'm telling you is most you should have every statement in that box, um, or you should subpoena the custodian of the police records, but or ask the state if you think you're missing something. I'm clearly missing something. I, I don't know what to put right there. That's the best I can do for you, sir. I can only review them for completeness. The state referenced an objection based upon their review of them. So whether you put that information in or not, that's up to you. Would it be, would it be sufficient to just put you can leave it blank also, correct, Your Honor? You yeah, don't you don't have to fill it in. It can be left blank if I'm not answering that correct. or the, I don't want you to think you have to put something there. Yeah, only, that's, that, that was my impression. You know, usually when you're... Got it. It's, it's the same thing with a job application. You're not supposed to leave nothing blank. Okay, let me answer it this way because <laughs> I was not tracking with that one. Um, <laughs> you only fill that out if there's something specific as it relates to this case that you want them to bring. You're not required to, though. Okay. There's a subpoena, and there's what's called a subpoena ducus tecum, which means bring something with. If you just want them to come to court and testify, it's just a plain old subpoena. So hopefully that helps. That is clarification. All right. I'll address the other issue tomorrow morning. Um, I'll give you some time while you're sitting here to get the subpoenas all filled out so that... Uh, the state can look at that and start working on getting them served with the exception of the one that they indicated was out of state, okay? Anything else from you then tonight, Mr. Brooks? Uh, that would be it. All right, thank you everyone. We are in recess.